They caught us because the local unit picked up a red hard that, for reasons unknown to us, has failed to stop on a couple of A roads up here north of the county. It was at high speed, obviously it's a high performance car, it's been followed by a local policing unit. I think they've lost the battle really. If so, we all tipped out, served the road crime units, we're all tactical pursuit compliant, getting ourselves in the right place to see if we can pick it up. As Lisa races to intercept, the runaway is picked up by another unit. But its driver ups the ante. It's just ramming. Oh, it's just random. Ramming a cop cars put the fail to stop to the top of Knott's most wanted list. And five miles ahead of Lisa and Jim. The traffic unit has managed to catch up with the suspect on a rural road. And it doesn't look like he's heading out for a quiet country drive. The runaway misses an oncoming car by millimetres. The suspect vehicle has some serious horsepower, and the driver hits the gas. But the cops hang on as they approach a roundabout at almost a ton. It's not long before the suspect's aggressive driving puts an innocent motorist in serious danger. The suspect motor smashes into the white car, forcing it off the road. The lead cop car has to abandon the pursuit to check for injuries. But waiting up ahead in an unmarked Volvo S60 is interceptor Gav Hall. Incoming at three o'clock. Radio 66, we're pursuit. We are travelling towards the city of the 614. A 155 mile per hour motor would be a handful for the most experienced driver, but the guy at the wheel is believed to be a teenager. Uh, making several overtakes. Speed is currently 9080. One wrong move, and it's curtains. Interceptor units across the county are honing in, using their vast road experience to best guess its escape route. Zulu 2, we're going to try and get down to Red Hill RA for a stinger. We're in Ravenshead. Just gun it to Red Hill Island, mate. It's going south. While cops try to get ahead of him, back at the sharp end, Gab's on the lad like a shadow. Uh, overtaking several vehicles now. And he's now got back up behind. Second team, that unit moved in. Approaching the main junction. It's four up. Four in the car, and they're all believed to be youngsters. Teenage driver's not only risking his own life, but his passengers as well. And the risks are rising. We are still heading towards the city. They're heading straight for built-up areas and running out of time to get the runaway stopped on safe roads. Can we get uh, tactical contact authorised, please? Tactical contact is only authorised in extreme situations but a fail-to-stop teenager in a rapid car is seen as exceptional circumstances. Well, you're going towards the city. If it goes any closer, suitable location, map, contact, contact, it's at low speed. Yeah, that's the thank you. Low speed authority is all well and good. But the driver's showing no signs of slowing down for a nudge. We're approaching the traveller's rest to the near side. Whatever the lad's done, he's desperate to avoid a face-to-face -face with the interceptors. He's making several erratic overtakes. It's still medium, 
but it will take more than a few dodgy overtakes to shake Gav. The pursuit's now almost 10 minutes old, and it's rush hour. Have it at the moment. However, even the busy roads aren't slowing this boy racer down. Going down the centre of the carriageway. And he's now at motorway speeds in a 30. We're approaching heavy traffic. If he slows enough, the interceptors can use tactical contact. From offside, down the carriageway, now going down the centre of the carriageway. But will they stop him before he reaches Nottingham City Centre? He's going to kill someone. From Radio 6 we're the suit. The interceptors are after a high-performance car that's rammed a local cop and failed to stop. The driver's believed to be a teenager and is leaving a trail of carnage in his wake. He's driving like an absolute idiot. They've got authority for a tactical contact, but only at low speeds. We're approaching heavy traffic. And despite the busy roads, the lad shows no signs of slowing. From offside. Found the carriageway, now going down the centre of the carriageway. Jim and other interceptor units try to get ahead. But with every mile, it gets busier and riskier. It's continuing straight down towards the city. If the runaway reaches the city centre, they may have to abort the pursuit. He's going to kill someone. Offside, round two keep left bollards. A near miss with white van man. But an oncoming red Citroen doesn't get off so lightly. It's crash, it's flight contact to an uh, oncoming vehicle. Stand by. It's a whisker away from a very messy head on. The impact seems to have slowed him down, and the interceptors spot their chance. The second pursuit car speeds in front. While Gav makes tactical contact. Game over. Get it out! Go, 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 go! Driver and passengers are given a helping hand from the car. Vehicle stop. It's a successful end to a high-risk situation. The young driver's off to the cop car as Jim and Lisa arrive on scene. Close, but no cigar, Lisa. Gutted we weren't on the back of that. It was coming down, mate. We'd have popped out on the his lane for the stinger. The teenage driver isn't even old enough to hold a licence. Jim's been involved in a fair share of pursuits, but baby drivers left him shocked. I suppose when you get to the end of a pursuit like that, which was inherently dangerous in, in parts, I suppose you expect to see a really hardened criminal inside this car with the risk they're taking and the standards of driving they're displaying. And in this situation, what we find is a young lad who's been sick when he's been stopped by the police. His adrenaline would have been through the roof. It's fair to say Gav, who was in the lead car for most of the pursuit, isn't impressed. He's taken a, a really sort of high-performance vehicle that maybe he's, he's not driven before. He doesn't seem that familiar with it. The manner of his driving, he nearly lost control of it a few times, suggests he shouldn't be driving it. He's not capable of driving it. And uh, he's willing to take risks in it. And unfortunately, if he wants to risk his own life, that's one thing. But he's also putting the public at risk as well. So you thought you just 
Jim tries to get to the bottom of what's gone on. What about the police officer you crashed into then? An old man as well, apparently, on that roundabout. And what about the cop you ran into to try and escape? Where's that? Oh, at the bottom of the lane? Yeah, what about that? So you didn't care about injuring police officers then? I did, but in the moment you just want to go, don't you? You, you, just, you think you're not going to get nicked for it. You, you are, think right? you're not going to get nicked? Yes. Look, with all due respect, mate, how stupid are you? Jim's not mincing his words, as it's a near miracle no one's been seriously injured. Mate, you're ramming cops, you're putting members of the public's lives at risk. Start thinking about your behaviour. Have a little think about it, yeah? No wonder you're throwing up. I'm just a bit shocked, to be fair. <laughs> and he's laughing. He's laughing. Chuckles didn't find it quite so funny when the courts found him guilty of dangerous driving, taking without consent, failure to stop, and driving without a valid license or insurance. Baby driver was banned for three years and got a detention and training order for eight months. In all the years I've been engaged in pursuits and dealing with criminals that are hell-bent on escaping, this one will probably stick in my memory for a fair bit because it's one of those really surprising ones where you see a young teenage lad taking ridiculous risks. Unbelievable, really. Nottinghamshire's interceptors police a population of around 1.1 million. But when criminals from other counties venture in, they're more than happy to bang them up as well. One increasingly used tool in their armoury is the automatic number plate recognition system. We've got a countrywide ANPR system that we can log into because they will travel to commit crime. They know that the local cops in their area are going to be read out on where they're going, what they're doing, so they will travel across the border, like, for example, Leicestershire, Derbyshire. We border for forces. It's very easy for them to drop over on tours. So the cameras really do give us like the heads up on where they're heading. It will show us patterns, behaviours, and it will give us a bit of an insight into the way they're moving around the country. Can I just make you aware of a vehicle that we're keeping an eye out for today? Knife crime team members Sergeant Johnny Groves and Chantel McDowell have their eyes peeled for a white Renault Kangoo. We saw it yesterday at the back of a disqualified driver's house, but hanging around it was a different nominal. He's wanted for burglary for a dwelling on Derbyshire, and we saw him stood in front of that van. Believed to be just out of prison on licence, the suspect should be keeping his head down, not driving a dodgy van with false plates. Up until four or five days ago, it was hitting all the city cameras and then now started hitting Ashfield cameras. The vehicles left a trail of breadcrumbs for the cops and they're hungry for this bloke's collar. Eyes down for ANPR bingo. Yeah, part of lane, isn't it? Oh, it's just hit, so he's bound. Bingo. Vans pinged a camera downtown. Firearms travelling. This ex nursery nurse once sent the dog unit after a mannequin. She mistook for a burglar. The interceptor may have failed to recognise a dummy in the dark, but there's nothing wrong with her eyesight today. Is. Chantel's clocked the Renault on the opposite side of the carriageway. Traffic. An age just gone off side to off side with it, it's stuck in traffic. We've um, not made it obvious, so we'll spin round to try and get a follow on it. They're in a marked car and don't want to spook the suspect, who has previous for failing to stop and ramming cop cars. One occupant, Piver's jacket. The tactics are to get enough units in place before making their move. Johnny pulls a Yui and lets the X5 off the lead. We can't see it at the minute, we've spun around just trying to catch up with it. 
The driver may have made them and taken off. But he's soon back in their crosshairs. NHS at the Cotsmore Road Junction. Right Stop right. the red lights. It looks like it's going to be a right right. Where are you, Matt? En route a few miles away. Just passing uh, KMH. Hey, how many vans drive in T-Pack Stinger in a plane vehicle? Uh, where do you want me to Our fellow members of the knife crime team, Matt Stora and Paul Kingo Kingston. Uh, yeah, join us. We're on Cotswold Road. The team is closing in. Back with Chantel and Johnny. We can have a stop on it when we've got sufficient resources to do that. The bloke's chances of getting away are decreasing by a second. Matt and Kingo in the unmarked Volvo arrive and take the lead. Matt, we're waiting for the other car, mate. Yeah, thanks for waiting for another car to box this uh, van. They're a cop car short of a tactical box until a firearms unit joins the party. Can it, uh, directly behind you? With three units on scene... The left lap into the hospital is incapable. The van's guided down a side road and the suspect doesn't fancy a pursuit today. Yes, that's him, that's him. Stop, stop. Quicker than you can say your nick, mate. Chantel's got him cuffed. Stop out of here. No, no. Anyone else in the van, mate? No, no, no. Mate, come and take a seat in this car. Let's go. This, this, get this. You got it, don't you? No, no. So uh, you're under arrest on suspicion of a dwelling burglary. Where in? At Matlock. I don't know Matlock. your address at this time, I'll let you know. You don't say anything, but it may harm your defence. Don't mention one question or something, which is later on in court. Anything you do say, maybe give an evidence, you understand? Yeah. Right, buddy. Just pop your butt in there and swing your feet in. Is there anything in the van, mate, that we need to know about? No, nothing at all. Nothing apart from bolt cutters, some other tools, and a couple of needles. Just, they're just going to get rid of the needles in the hospital and then they're going to drive the van back and then we'll give it a proper search there. One detained on suspicion of burglary. It certainly beats banging up mannequins. Luckily, because of NPR network, it means that we've literally been out ten minutes and it's hit the camera um, and we've helped from some colleagues. We've, uh, we've managed to locate it and get him stopped. So he's, um, as we said earlier, he's, he's wanted for a burglary in Derbyshire. So uh, it looks like a fairly tidy job. The van and suspect are off to Mansfield Nick. He'll be interviewed by Derbyshire detectives. Hide back here as well, mate, under the While Kingo and Matt give the vehicle a proper search. There we go. Yeah, there's some red here, mate. Kingo's found the original plates. Oh, legend. It seems the van could have been nicked. You can see where they've attacked it. You got these bent tool marks. It looks like effectively just got. Screwdriver, your crazy, I'll get it behind. Stop price and open brute force. It's been a successful job for the interceptors, thanks in no small part to the technology at their disposal. It's another example of us sharing information and having access to the same system so we can see that he's wanted for jobs on another force. Um, and like I say, because of the AMPR technology, it just means that. As soon as he comes into Knott's, we know he's coming and we can sort of sort out a welcoming party and get him potted, which is what we've done today. For burglary, disqualified driving, no insurance and number plate offences, Van Man got two years and four months behind bars and was disqualified for seven years. Still to come. There's another phone here. Oh, this one's open as well. A suspected dealer's phone and the riddle of the texts. Anything from today? Yeah. Same what? People asking him for Z. Yeah. And there's a wake up call. Nice deep breath. For a suspected drink driver. 
Right, fail your zone 66. Not all shifts are wall to wall action. Oh, somewhere up here. A big asteroid comes down. <laughs> Wipes out, say hands. But Gav Hall and Joe Riley know their day can turn on a sixpence. I bet he's a dealer, I've had him for wits. They've spotted an empty car belonging to an old pal of Gav. Guys, just to um, let you know, there's a golf park. That comes back to somebody that I had for a cannabis peewits about two years ago. There's intel from this year again that he's still dealing drugs. Time to call in the troops. Ken, Matt, are you all right to cover that way if he leaves? Yeah, we're on route, mate. 10 -4. If this car moves off, we should have both ends of the street covered. One of our cars can pick it up, and it could be a decent little stop. With the Golf's escape routes covered, all they need now is the Golf. <sighs> That's not it. That'll be boring. But that is. Hey, there he is. There he is. There he is. That vehicle is off, off, off. It's one up. Game on. Are you going for a stop straight away? Or yes. No, we'll go for a stop straight away. The driver looks to have clocked their mark car. Wait, he's, he's yeah, looking. No, that's what I'm thinking. But he's seen sense. <laughs> you all right? Turn that music up a sat for us, pal. Proper lad, isn't it that? And its friends reunited. Jump over here for us, kid, you're right. You know. Intel, you're still dealing cannabis. Who is? That's what the intel says. Like who? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to ask you now. You got any cannabis on you? No, I haven't, mate. Going to get you searching the Misuse of Drugs Act, all right, mate? The suspect claims to have no drugs. How much money is there? Well, there's a wedge of cash. Keep your hands where I can see him, pal, please. Sergeant Matt and Ken Tinley arrive, and the team soon locate an item of interest. Sorry. Yeah, just a bit of cannabis from the uh, the door pocket. Judging from the driver, there may be more to come. He's very nervous, mate, I tell you. Shaking and sweating. Gav's a fan of TV's forensic detectives, but you won't find him rocking a lab coat. He prefers to get his hands dirty. There's got to be something in here, or it's down his pants. Here we go. Is this the suspect's secret stash? Here we go, what's this? Oh, sweet. There's nothing in the car for him, so what they're doing so long in the car. My man, there's nothing in there. Sweet Tooth is still sweating. Either he's OD'd on opal fruits or something else is making him nervous. Yeah, his phone's loaded. He's left his mobile unlocked, and it seems he's a popular boy. Anything from today? Yeah. Same what? People asking him for Z. Yeah. All of that panic is over that phone. Yeah. There's another phone here. Oh, this one's open as well. Yeah. Even this one's loaded, mate. Look, there's loads on here. Just give your hands to them, dude. There's enough to nick him for suspected supply. You're under arrest on suspicion of possession with intent to supply cannabis. That one bag of cannabis in the car. It's probably not the only bag he's got. I dare say when we get to his address, there'll be more there. Now it's just a case of finding where he lives. We're going to find any more when we search your address. But bloke's got a cunning plan. Dad, take you one from here. I'm sleeping in my car. You're sleeping in your car? Yeah, uh, not worth me searching it then. No, it's not worth searching it. Uh, it's not worth searching his own address. He's living in his car now. He's played his hand and gone all in, but the interceptors are ready to call his bluff. Stick him in that van, yeah. They found a set of keys in the golf and a clue to which door they'll fit on the mobile. Oh, sir. 
a bit of a hope that perhaps there was something on the phone and when you look at his timeline and it's on, on his on his Google Maps uh, the same address keeps uh, flagging up were you here the address is near to where they first spotted his car we don't know if he's living in one of these we're gonna just uh, check they've also intel that a man known to the police is renting out a room at the property Oh, right there, so it's close enough, isn't it? Straight opposite, yeah. Like the prince armed with Cinderella's slipper, Gav hopes the house key is a match. Yeah, it fits. It fits, but this story won't end with he lived happily ever after. Hi, I'm sorry to bother you. We've got stuff in here, and we've got information that he's stuck in here. Just, is he staying in a spare room? He comes on blocks now and then, yes. Right, OK, right. Is he? Is it like a rental agreement or...? Yeah, 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 he's, 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 he's paid for a lot of money now and then. Oh, oh, so. right. Is there anything in here that he shouldn't have? What do you mean? Well, they've basically, they've got an, getting an authority to search on Section 18 a pace. So I'm just asking if there's anything that shouldn't be here, that's all, pal. I can show you the room where, where, where he stays yeah. at. The team's welcomed in. I'll show you the room that he's in. He, 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 yes, mate. But it's not just the suspect's room they'll be searching. You know, because he's got a key for the front door and he's obviously got this room here, we will have to search throughout. It's not long before they sniff something dodgy. Chad. Hello. Stick your head in here. Tell me what you thought, smell. Smell weed? Yeah. Gav's nose strikes again. Ah, beautiful. Spare room. Four ounces of cannabis. He was obviously very nervous when we came in, but here we are, cannabis. So he'll be coming in for possession with intent to supply cannabis as well, and we'll carry on searching the season. Ken breaks the good news. Mate, I'm afraid we found around four ounces of cannabis in a, in a box or all right, so I'd have to arrest you on suspicion of possession of cannabis with intent to supply, all right. The search continues to bear fruit. A few more ounces in this bag. Two, three, another four ounces there. We're up to eight ounces of cannabis so far, still searching. Eight ounces is over a grand's worth of weed. Jeez, wow. A bit of cash. A set of digital scales, and they've got cannabis on them as well. And where there's drugs, there's often weapons. Quite a selection of samurai swords. What's all the weapons about? Police style asp. We'll seize that, we'll take that. It's been a good result for the cavalry in this twisted fairy tale. Both suspects have been charged with possession with intent to supply a controlled drug. The suspect of the house was charged with possession of a weapon in private, but faced no further action in court. I will admit now I've drunk, thir I've drunk a 35 millilitre bottle of whiskey. I'll have you. Drink driving is one of the biggest dangers on UK roads. Is that what you've been drinking whilst on the motorway? No, that's what I drank before I set off. Right. With even small quantities of alcohol affecting driving ability. Your driving's awful. You're swerving from lane to lane. You're stopping, you look like they nearly stalled it. I can smell drink on you. How much have you had? I've had two pints. And over 200 people are killed each year by those driving under the influence. So, when it comes to dealing with drunks at the wheel... And that's a fail, you've blown 93, OK? The interceptors have zero tolerance. I've done this job for 21 years, and the carnage that I've seen through drink driving... You have to do your job. Oh, yeah. Because if somebody ran your mum over who was drunk, you'd want me to, wouldn't you? It's kicking out time on Friday night. Prime time for drink driving. We are not far from that. Jen Else and the team are after a Renault Espace that's apparently failed to stop for officers earlier in the evening. Oh, what was that last ping, sorry? The driver may have given cops the slip, but they've got his reg and 11,000 ANPR cameras. It is possibly closed. Um, there have been hits in Cambridgeshire, but then no hits again until the 17th. We've been locked in the again. It looks like it's a claim vehicle, so it's on fake yeah, plates to try and hide its identity, basically. A suspected cloned car that's apparently failed to stop would be a tidy collar. 
so they call in nearby units and it's not long before a dog handler spots the escape. Duffy's behind it. Duffy keeps his distance and guides the team in. So if you're on the A610, up to BQ Island, left at Morrison's and follow it round, you might get in front of me. Right, that's where we're going. Jen might be a specialist dog handler with a commendation for work with her canine Quantum, but she's also an advanced driver. And she's with Duffy in no time. It's off, off. It's remaining left-hand lane. It's straight on to Church Street. We will stay out of the way because Duffy's got the lead on this. So. I am in a marked car, but he's not particularly reacted to me. He's still doing 30. The driver apparently failed to stop earlier tonight, but seems oblivious to the cop car convoy behind him. He's gone a roundabout arse that way. He's going to be a drink driver, maybe. Still uh, dropping between 30 and 40 mile an hour. It's doing nothing too outrageous. However, he's got a sudden need for speed. Up to uh, 85, about to enter the 50s. I don't expect him to slow down for it. And they now join a dual carriageway. He is now accelerating up to uh, 100. Two other units, including an unmarked, join proceedings via a slip road. The plan? To perform a T-pack. The driver randomly slows and they spot their window. There'll be no escape this time. Like Just past Ikea, boxed in like a flat pack. Quantum's keen to play fetch. But the tinny-toting passenger is in no state to run. Get out the car! And the driver's in an even worse state. Out the car. Get in. Face it up. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Quantum keeps an eye on them. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Good lad. Good lad. As Paul Charlesworth does the honours. You're under arrest for failing to stop from dangerous no. driving. You don't have to stop, but it may on the fence. Do not mention any questions? Early, you later on. You didn't do it. Anything you do, sir, may be given evidence. You're lucky we didn't smash the window. Follow me for a second, please. Any more laid back, and he'd be asleep. He's just an idiot. I mean, he's clearly drunk, but he's just, I mean, oblivious to it all. Just doesn't seem to have a care in the world. So, uh, it just strikes me as an absolute idiot, to be fair. Breath test him in a minute. He'll blow. He was clothed as soaking with beer. There's cans of beer in the car. He stinks of it. His car is like a pub on wheels. I've got plenty of reasons to think you've had a drink because you stink of it, your beer in your coat pocket and all sorts. And you've also committed a road traffic offence, which gives me the power to request a specimen breath. All right? Have you had anything to eat or drink in the last 20 minutes? Yeah, I've had a drink, yeah. What did you have? Uh, a can off my mate. Yeah, a can off your mate? Yeah. What was that? Oh, 10 minutes ago. His blood alcohol levels could still be rising. Right, take a nice deep breath and give him a steady blow. Wakey, wakey! Take a nice deep, deep breath and give him a steady blow until he's totally stopped. Blow. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's it, thank you. And surprise, surprise. Right, it's fair, we've blown 66. Right, further underestimated. That's almost twice the drink driving limit. Beggar's belief, really, that he's driving without the child calling the system. All he has to do is lose grip of the wheel, head on into another vehicle at 110 mile an hour, combined speed of, what is it, 50, 160, it's game over, isn't it? Being boozed up isn't the only issue. He's uh, disqualified driver as well, I'm just listening. I'll have to further driving whilst disqualified from driving out insurance. This is one menace they're delighted to get off the roads. 
Sleepyhead pleaded guilty to dangerous driving and driving above the alcohol limit while disqualified and uninsured. He was banned from driving for a further three years and put behind bars for 14 months. No further action was taken for the suspected cloned plates. Coming up. You've done what? Shoplifted. John and Macca go after the meat snatcher. Oh, there he's coming. It's estimated 5% of British adults have shoplifted. Pocket there, dropped into a skirt underneath. You can see also the stolen goods underneath the long skirt. There are a staggering 1,000 shoplifting offences committed every day in the UK, with over half of these going unpunished. Certainly within our force area, uh, and I've no doubt across the whole of the UK, shoplifting is still uh, massive, really. It tends to be people funding the habit that we come across, uh, so they'll nick, um, if it's food stuff or drink stuff, it, it's uh, you know, it, steaks and bacon and the like, stuff that they can sell on, and then obviously use their, the proceeds to, to feed what un unfortunate habit they've, uh, they've got. What colour is that course? Mate? Silver, Silver yeah. yeah. It's Saturday afternoon. I thought we'd have seen it by now. On John Lee and Paul Macca McClintock's shopping list is a vehicle that's pinged an ANPR camera. The occupants inside are a pair of well-known shoplifters. No course in the drive through But there's better look outside the M&S. There it is. She's driving. Yeah. Brake light out. Spin on so it. Macca's got a hunch. He's probably just doing a shop theft now in Mark Suspensers. Mm. And by the looks of it, he's spot on. What's happening? Is that him? That's, yeah, that's... Is he getting... Let's see what they're saying. Yeah, are you watching him? Yeah. He's done what? Shoplifted. Is he getting in that car? Into the car park. The suspects legged it with a load of stakes. Ooh, that's narrow. He's not coming in. And the boys are desperate to meet him. Is there anybody uh, near Bridgeford? A shop worker in hot pursuit. Oh, there he's running, running. Makes way for the pros. Stay there we are! Stay there we are! Get out. Oh, you're low on that. What are you doing? This is not just shoplifting. Uh, what Come are you here. doing? Stay Keep here. Your hands behind your back. You're under arrest for shop theft. This is M&S shoplifting. All right. We'll do it! Stop resisting! Stop resisting! Get down on the floor. Stop messing about. What are you doing on... Stop! Messing about! Put your hands behind your back! This meathead's hands are where they belong. Sort. Right, bring your knees up, sit up, sit on the curb. There's six packets of steak and, in the interests of a balanced diet, a pizza. Can I have some officers to us, please, at uh, Bridgeford? Back up arrives. Right, switch engine. But it's not for the cops, it's the Silver Corsa. Switch engine off, stop. Right, oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. All right. He's with you, isn't he? No. Yes, he is. Right. He's not with me. Right. Go and grab a seat in the back of our car. While Macca manages the meat snatcher. What are you doing? John handles Miss Corsa. If I look in our cameras and he's not going to be in your car? No. Duffy arrives to lend a hand. Last time you had a full inflatable kayak, didn't you, from Decathlon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it seems Mr Meat is quite the thief about town. Thank you. 
Right, mate, you also wanted for theft at Sainsbury's um, on the 21st of this month. All right, so you're also under arrest for that one. You don't have to say anything about me, I'm just going to mention my questions to me later on in court. Anything you do say, maybe give me evidence. All right, buddy. And there's a breach of court order outstanding as well. It's a balancing act for Duffy. Look at that, eh? As John and Macca conduct a search. We want you to stand up and then I'm going to do a quick search on you to make sure you've got nothing else in your pockets. I've got something in that one. Yeah, what is it? Eh? A pipe. You got any pins on you? No. Is there anything in it? Right, mate, mate, you carry on. I'm just going to put the cuffs behind your back and it's going to hurt again, isn't it? There's nothing else on the suspect. And while the lady's free to go, he's got a date with the Nick. You got any COVID symptoms or anything like that? Mm. You had it in the past? Yeah, I've got it. You got... Have you? Yeah. You think you've got it? Anyone with suspected COVID gets to make their own special entrance. The COVID door. But his symptoms don't appear too bad. What are you doing? Right. Hey? Taking the pack now. Well, you're no, not. You've got you're COVID. not, here. Well, it's Shouldn't smoke if you've got COVID, it's bad for you. And so is shoplifting. Yeah, just in that cell there, buddy. Meat Thief was found guilty of shop theft and fined £40. He got a four week prison term suspended for 12 months. Purloin sirloin again, and his rump is cooked. Six sirloin steaks worth 100 quid and then a three quid pizza for his, uh, for his kids. So it's, it's not like he's gone in to nick a meal because he's hungry. He's gone in to nick a load of steaks that he can sell to fund his drug habit and that's the sad thing about it. Oh, police! Come to the door. You come to no harm. Shots fired. Crime never sleeps. But neither Police officer with the taser. do the cops. Battling on the front line. Get on the floor! Get on the floor now! Are Nottinghamshire's finest. Highly trained pursuit drivers. Oh, oh God. Vehicle failing to stop. Specialists in entry and search. Oh, my word. There is multi kilos of cannabis in here. Rapid response firearms officers. Oh, hey! I can see him now! Get on the dog! And the crime stopping force. Chase us now! Of the dog unit. Stop it! Wherever the battle takes them. On the ground! They'll never back down. Take the taser! Because come at the hour. Yeah, Zulu 2, we're underneath you now, Empath. Come at the interceptors. <laughs> Put it this way, mate. You level that gun at us, you would have got shot. Coming up. Crash, crash, crash. Here we go. A wanted driver takes to the pavement. He's running the wrong side of some arm coat. Where's it be going? A wanted passenger stretches his legs. Stop there, mate. Fight. Right. And approaching junction with Portland Street now. A wanted van man gets stuck. Leasing a force area of 834 square miles, Nottinghamshire's interceptors have their finger on the pulse of all the motors moving through their county. Is that towards Bain Marion? When a car on the hot list is spotted, it's down to cops like dog handler Coops to track it down. So there's a vehicle where hit one of our cameras, it's got a few marks on it saying that it's failed to stop previously in other uh, force areas. Um, so it's definitely, it's definitely worth a stop. The silver Mercedes they're after has previously failed to stop for other forces four times. They were not necessarily that far behind it. Now it's on the move in Nottingham. 
And there's another sighting. This is from 200 yards off the Don Road, R8, 10 feet. Yeah, so we're literally a couple of hundred yards behind it now. ARVs have got it. Covertly catching up in its unmarked Skoda. Delta 5 1, 2 in the stick. Coops falls in behind another unmarked unit, who are tailing the target silver Mercedes. It's one of them, 50 50. Oh, Intel's saying this car will fail to start. We never know what's going to happen. If the driver clocks they've got company, they could prepare for vanishing act number five. A big risk when they're driving a Merc packing a top speed of almost 150 miles an hour. To the other units, I'm in the blue and Mark Skoda, so eyes out for that car. The plan is to lay low until backup arrives to help with the box, but it looks like the driver is already getting twitchy. And he has just gone to lane three. It's a little telltale signs now that he's trying to uh, lose us or shake us off. It's very hard to follow sometimes. He's going to give it legs here. Yeah, it's going up. Dash cam from the lead car shows the driver throwing in a late lane change before booting it. It's time to break cover. A flash of the blues has zero effect. The driver's intentions are clear. Coops is still the second car in convoy. So there we go, fifth fail to stop now. It's obviously a very busy boy. Back in the lead car. Seconds after the pursuit is given the go-ahead. The driver takes a death-defying risk. Tearing across two lanes at 120 miles an hour, the lead car has no chance of following. Lost it on the turn off the M1. They might have shaken off one unit. Coops, however, is locked on target. With the Merc careering onto an M1 junction at over 100 miles an hour. And flying off road. Crash, 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 here we go. Here we go. It looks like it's all over. But this driver is just getting started. In Nottinghamshire, interceptors are on the tail of a silver Merc. Delta 5, 1, 2 in the stick. Which has four markers for failing to stop for other forces. Vickle is now failing to stop. Now speeding into round five at 120 miles an hour, the driver has given one unit the slip. But Coops is still close behind. Crash, 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 here we go. Here we go. Unbelievably, the dangerous driver barrels off-road to jump the lights. He's running the wrong side of the command cone. Ploughing along a footpath. Dog handler Coops usually sends in the dog to catch criminals. Tonight, it's his advanced driving skills which are being called into play. Coming through, Hayno. 
The Merck's 168 horses are no match for Coupe's Skoda VRS. But the runaway driver isn't playing by the rules. So safety is top priority. Another unit directly behind helps with commentary so Coops can manage the risks on the road. The dangerous driver is flying the wrong way over roundabouts. Recklessly slicing through traffic. And hitting such high speeds that the driver is starting to pull away from the interceptors. Delta 5 1, it's still up ahead into Leicestershire. Coops catches a glimpse of the cross border bends. High risk, it's gone offside of the RA. As the high performance motor rampages into oncoming traffic on a roundabout. Is that it? Yeah, it's committed A50, A50, correct carriageway. 130 miles an hour and climbing. 140 miles an hour, a marked car takes the lead. But with the Merc pulling away at nearly 150 miles an hour, it's clear the driver is willing to risk everything to escape the law. The units split up to cover every exit of the roundabout. I-138, nothing in the distance. The Merc has disappeared. It's a shame, isn't it? Good about that. The level of driving was um, horrific, really. That lad is, is risked a lot there to avoid what he possibly thinks is years and years in prison. But for us, we've got to play the game and manage everyone else's safety, and that is priority. Uh, you've got to weigh up what's safe and what isn't. Um, and in the end, them speeds that risk. Yeah, they've, they've got away and they'll be high-fiving themselves tonight, but if we just, that, we'll just be thankful that no-one's been injured or hurt. And, and this time will come. Uh, I've got no doubt about that. It may be round five to the Merc, but the search for the elusive motor continues. In the fight against crime, sometimes you just can't beat a bit of interceptor intuition. There's such a thing as the, the copper's nose, and it, it does it does pay off, especially when we're out and about looking at vehicles. But yeah, you, you're just looking at manner of driving, you're looking at how people react to you. You do get a gut feeling. Uh, and what I always say, it's best off to run with that gut feeling, because half the time it turns out to, uh, to pay dividends. It's bank holiday weekend in Nottingham. But for Lisa DeSantis and Sergeant Jim Carrington, there's no time to put their feet up. A Vauxhall insignia flies past. We'll do a check once the radio is free. And triggers the old copper's nose. Get the feeling. I don't know. I mean, it's obvious we're turning around. The passenger around. was open the door and then has closed it again. It is weird. It was quick, wasn't it, mate? It was massively quick. With the Mark V series in tow, now the Insignia driver seems to be the model motorist. He's looking, the passenger's looking. However, his passenger seems a bit twitchy. Could I uh, have a code too, please? Initial checks show the car is legit. I could just ask him what the game is. What Interceptor Intuition says, something's dodgy. 
Oh, they're going to help us out shortly because they're going to be going into there. <laughs> the insignia is heading for the train station. I'm going to go in and just ask him if he's in a rush. Yeah, I'll get Charlie and come Yeah. If the last 20 years on the front line have taught father of five Jim anything, it's that if something looks too good to be true... <laughs> look at that. Where's it going? It probably is. Stop there, mate! Hey! The passenger's giving it legs. Hey, mate, you've got a runner out of that car. Down past the railway station, back up towards Queen's Drive. Stop there, mate! Hey! But Jim's not going to be beaten. Up towards London Road and the canal. Running from me, the black man bag. Stop there, mate! Briefly losing sight. He's out onto London Road. Jim channels his inner athlete and stays hot on the runner's heels. Hold there, mate. What are you running for? What? It's the end of the line for this runaway. Can I have some officer to me, please? I'm just by the Jury's in London Road. Got him detained on the bridge trying to discard a bag. Uh, directly opposite the Virgin Active Health Club. There you go. You've got a warrant out. Well, honesty is the best policy. Got the front seat passenger detained, saying he's wanted on warrant. Clearly, their interceptor intuition was spot on. Right, man, I'm just going to wait for a cop to join me so I can get you secure, so I'm happy, mate. Talk right, so I'm on my own with you. Yeah. I don't know why you've run off. You're telling me you're wanted on warrant, but for all I know, you could have something on you shouldn't have, a weapon, something's going to hurt me. You could say no, but I don't know that, all right? You've obviously run off for a reason. I imagine if there was something serious in this bag, you would have lobbed it by now, so I'm hoping I won't find anything here that's too terrible. Thankfully. It's a handcuffs, brother. Good man. Jim escorts his latest catch back to the car, this time at a more leisurely pace so they can hammer out why the suspect ran. As you suggested, mate, yeah, you are obviously wanted on warrant for failing to appear at the Nottinghamshire Magistrates Court for disqualified driving. So you're under arrest on suspicion of that warrant, OK? Obviously, you should be turned up at court and you haven't. Um, should be detained and put before the next available court. All right, mate, you know the score. Come and have a seat, mate. As well as skipping his court date for disqualified driving, the not-so-light-footed lad has also fessed up to having drugs in his bag. So what do you think's in your little, little bag, mate? Bit of weed and a bit of cat. Anything else? To... No. You can see what's in there. Just a bit of weed at the minute. So he's got a little bit of cat in here, which is probably in a powder form, from what I can feel. Lad likes his drugs and running off from the cops. Whereas Jim likes nothing more than feeling the colour of a runaway. To be fair, mate, if I don't catch people in the first hundred yards, I usually don't catch them. <laughs> so you're doing pretty well, to be fair. You're born the same year as me. <laughs> but I'm carrying about two stone a kit. I wanted to be caught. Let you touch me. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, it kind of shakes. When I got round the corner, I tried to make it look good, but you kind of given up, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm also further arresting you on suspicion of being in possession of a controlled drug, mate. All right, namely herbal cannabis and what we suspect is ketamine or some other controlled drug. Okay. Remind you still under caution. All right, mate. Jim might think that's a simple end to this job, but at the other end of the street... And then I, 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 my, my disqualification was gone after the 18th. Lisa is dealing with the driver, who hung around as good as gold. And I need it for work However, and stuff, do you know? yeah, yeah, but you can't drive it without yeah, a licence. I, 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 I've, I've got that, so if I ring DVLA up in the morning and speak to them about what's It happened. turns out he's also previously banned from driving and seems surprised to learn his licence has expired. An email sent to me from them... To so final destination for the insignia... Is the recovery yard. Like email you lot that I've proved from DVLA or something. Well, the problem the problem we've got is that I... I'm going to take it to the police station. You no, lot pretend no like you're taking it for a search. No. You lot go and search it. I you can't lot go and give it a good search. Say, Mate. right, we need to take the search this car. We need to search this car. Come on, please. A favor. I Let's can't, right, to... listen. Look, you could, you could say... No, I couldn't say that. Do you know why I couldn't say that? Because I'm a police officer and I swore on please. the oath to please. protect and serve. And you're telling me I've got to yeah, lie. 
Desperate to keep his car, the driver tries his luck with the Sarge. The issue that we've got, mate, is we can only go, go by what the DVLA database is telling us. Yeah, I know, yeah. And like, like I've just said to you, if we have grounds to suspect your licence is invalid, if, if, we'll if, impound if, if the if car. If you online, which I've tried to do, and you can't do it online from after being disqualified, you have to do it by the form from the post office. You can't do it online. There's no way mm. of doing it online of doing it. Mate, I don't... You have to get the form from the post office, which I've done and sent it. Mate, I, I don't necessarily disbelieve I know, you. I, know, I honestly I know, don't. I know, uh, I know. But our hands are tied. It's been a good day for the Interceptor Intuition. Next stop for the wanted runner is the Nick. And recovery are en route for the Insignia. Despite pleading to keep his car, the driver didn't collect it. He's been reported for driving without a licence and could face a £100 fine. The twinkle-toed passenger, who was wanted on warrant for disqualified driving, is still under investigation for the Class B drugs found in his bag. But he was delivered to court the next day and dealt with for driving whilst disqualified. Thanks in part to the finely tuned machine, Jim. He looks like an athlete. Stop there, mate! Oi! Hold there, mate. He, um, he just runs. A bit slower than maybe, you know. Maybe he should, but... And he has no idea that I'm talking about it. Are you taking the mick out of me? <laughs> Did you say something about gangly legs? I just says how you as an athlete and how, a matter of fact, him running slightly uphill... Yeah. Um, he had no chance of getting away well, from Well, I was you, an Jim. athlete for the first 100 metres and then I backed off a bit. No, and I think he did a good job, I well, think. Well, I'm doing slow off the cakes, though. Well, oh, did you say that as well? No. Good. I didn't even mention Kate. Bro. Whether it's spotting a familiar face or some dodgy driving, not much gets past Nottinghamshire's eagle-eyed knife crime team. <laughs> They've got three cars keeping a lookout over in Radford, including Gav Hall and co-pilot Joe Riley. Oh. Waiting at the lights. See that? Yeah. One driver draws their attention. It's definitely a red light. He's just gone through. The red light runner is not hanging around. So Gav puts his foot down. And catches sight of the driver slipping into a side road. There, mate. The driver's quick to park up and jump out. Bella! Bella! Come here, sir. But as news of the stop travels over the airwaves... Oh, I know where it is. It's on the right. Within seconds, he's got the full complement of the knife crime team, including Adam and Sergeant Matt. We're with him, Ken. It's ditched, his, ditched the car here, lob the key under the car, so we don't know why. Ran a red. Would it be the baseball bat on the back seat first? For a beginner. Let's, I'm just going to move the car out so we can get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like the driver could have something to hide. Yeah. The question is, what? In Radford, definitely red light. He's just gone through. Gav and Joe have caught up with a lad who ran a red light. Bella, come here, sir. Suspecting there could be more to this than meets the eye, the knife crime team have assembled to search his car. Back knee doing it. Uh, yes, mate. Yeah, there's a baseball bat on the back seat. Cannabis in here. Just quite safe. Yeah? Yeah. So, so far, we found a small bag of what looks like probably coke, cocaine, uh, and then another bag just with loose cannabis in. Um, so, at the minute, that's all we've found. Meanwhile, Joe has done some digging of his own. 
Not only is the driver currently under investigation for drug dealing, but he's also got an upcoming court case for drug driving. Pop your lips around that tube for me in one long, steady breath. With booze and suspected drugs in his motor, is history going to repeat itself? Keep going, keep going, keep going. Thank you. Zero, mate. So you're all good on alcohol. Zero. Would you not expecting that? I don't know, to be fair. I don't know how it works, but you know what I mean? It's all clear on the drink drive front, but how about the drugs? A drugs wipe test can detect cocaine and cannabis in saliva in just eight minutes. He looks under the influence, and within 30 seconds of the swipe being back, he's uh, come back positive for cocaine. We have to wait the eight minutes, but that obviously shows that he's under the influence of something already. It clearly has been very recently. Eight minutes later, there's a touch of deja vu. Right, mate, you provide a positive sample out on this drug swipe. Okay, you provide a positive sample for cannabis and cocaine. The moment in time, it is 831 now, you're under arrest for driving. It's a while for the you're not right. You're also under arrest, obviously, on suspicion of possession of Class A and possession of Class B, because obviously, some cannabis and cocaine in your car as well. What was suspected is cocaine. All right, mate? Clearly, not learning his lesson, is he? Um, yeah, nice little stop. And there's one more offence to add to the list. Yeah, so off the back seat we've got baseball bat and then nice golf club for him. So he's been arrested for uh, having possession of an offensive weapon and then when he go, he's going custody anyway for the drug drive, so he'll get asked about them at the same time. But you know when you put it together, you know, there's intel to say he's drug dealing, he's driving around with drugs in his car and laid on his back seat is a baseball bat and a driver and of course they say well I've got a golf club with me because I play golf so it puts the onus back on us to prove the offence this scenario there's no there's no golf balls there's no baseballs there's no gloves there's none of the other equipment you'd expect to find for someone that plays baseball or golf um, and it's been found with drugs I think we know full well that people that are in possession, particularly with intent to deal drugs, um, they need to defend themselves, so more often than not, they'll arm themselves. After a pit stop at the Nick to book in their findings... Seize from him. Yep, three times deals, deal bags of white powder. The knife crime team head back out to continue the investigation. When he's got down to custody, he's been strip searched. Um, they've found three bags of cocaine in his sock, um, £300 in cash, uh, and when they've looked at his phone, it's ringing constantly, um, which is signs of drug dealing. Now the interceptors have got the go ahead to search a flat linked to the suspect. Where have you put them to get in? Yeah, don't, don't need a button. And it doesn't disappoint. This would have been in amongst all these carrier bags in here. Anyway, loads of different names, I guess. Immediately as we've come in, we've been struck by the smell of cannabis and you can see that he's cutting it all up and packaging it all out here with his scales. Um, he's got tubs of it, he's got deal bags. There's more in this cupboard, cash. Um, you know, when you're trying to prove the difference between possession and possession with intent to supply, um, you can't find much better than this, to be honest. So I'd say he's now in trouble. The driver has been released under investigation for possession with intent to supply Class A and B drugs and possession of an offensive weapon. For three counts of drug driving, the red light runner was banned from driving for two years. Life as an interceptor isn't all blues and twos. 
At any given time, there's a fleet of high-performance unmarked vehicles hidden in plain sight. The unmarked vehicles, although I think that your sort of criminals will clock these cars, it does allow us to uh, have a little bit element of surprise, perhaps implement a tactic that we are planning on doing, so whether that's sort of a, a T-Pack or Stinger, whatever, it just allows that little bit extra time and space to get closer to what we're aiming to do. It's mid-morning in Mansfield, and interceptor Phil Broughton is on the hunt for a white van. It's a VW Caddy. It's allegedly got a wanted yeah, man. The suspect is fresh on the wanted list following two alleged assaults in the early hours. And Phil's in exactly the right place. There it is. At exactly the right time. Attention. That's a Tango 82 in H. A quick Yui, and Phil sets his sights on getting this reportedly violent man off the road pronto. I've got that vehicle, Hermitage Lane, just spinning on it. Advanced driver Phil has over two decades' experience in clearing up the wanted list, and today he's got an added ace up his sleeve. I'm behind it now. It's a white male driver. Uh, I've got no vehicles for cover. He's flying incognito in an unmarked Beamer. The RA, it's taking me a second, a second, Hamilton Road. I'm directly behind it, unmarked advance vehicle. If Van Man clocks he's being tailed, he could try to escape. So Phil needs to keep tabs on the suspect until backup is nearby to assist with the stop. Vehicle, there's no indication it's now moved into the left hand lane. It's going to be a left, left, left onto Station Road. The wanted man's driving is raising red flags. It's a bit of an erratic route he's taking. It's whether or not he's trying to confirm there's a uh, BMW following him. And so is some new intel. Uh, the information is potentially he may have stabbed somebody last night, so he might be in possession of a knife. So just got to bear that in mind. Uh, and also he might be drunk, which might be why he's uh, weaving slightly. A potentially armed and drunk driver could pose a serious threat. From 8 to, he has just crossed the central reservation, Tom Cumming uh, Lane. No traffic. He's now on the correct side. To put the brakes on this suspect, Phil will guide fellow interceptors into position. It's a left, left, left Chapel Street towards St. Wilfrid's Church. And they are armed with a stinger. From Mosque Tango 8 to, speed has now increased to 4 0 miles per hour in a 3 0. Yes, yes, received. Teamwork and timing are crucial. We're just approaching the three zero signs with the Selston signs. Another unit are lying in wait up ahead. Speed has increased now to uh, two five miles per hour. Vehicle is directly behind the tractor. Stinger at the ready. Approaching junction with Portland Street now. It's time to strike. All four tires, all four tires. One suspect is swiftly in cuffs. After a supreme sting, which left every tire in tatters. I'll find out full details shortly, but ultimately, under arrest on suspicion of GBH, this happened last night. Did you ever say anything? Did you may harm your defence? You don't mention when questioned, so we should later rely on in court. Anything to do, say, you may be given notice. No, yeah, Have you had anything to drink at all today? Because when I've been following you, you've been weaving. Yeah, but... show me street five. Yeah. I shouldn't be driving. I've gone to Kings Mill Hospital, maybe. Does he think he's down? No, there's some... Is that me? Another one. Another one in, I think. Have you thrown up in the van as well? Because there's a load of stick on the floor. Yeah, no. It's not mine, mate. It's not yours. That who done it can wait. Phil wants to check whether the dodgy driving is down to the van man's sore eye or a sore head from the night before. Okay, that's a nice deep breath and blowing vent until I tell you to stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Thank you very much. Which is zero, that's fine. Oh, yeah. No, I don't know, do I, until I ask. It's all right, because I was following you were weaving, but obviously with the eye, that might explain it. 
He might have passed the breathalyzer, but Van Man is still heading to custody to be questioned about the two assaults. Your chariot awaits. We thought he, he was going to be drunk, um, but it turns out he's got an issue with his eye, which he's been to hospital with, and he's trying to put eye drops in his other eye, so that's why he couldn't see and that's why he was swerving. So definitely still shouldn't be on the road uh, in, in that condition or what have you. These guys are going to drop you off down the man, so I'm following, so when we get there, I'll be booking you in. Lee's managed to deploy the stinger brilliantly. So, uh, no, he's really good stop. I say, no damage to any of the police vehicles, nobody's been injured, the person we want has been arrested, uh, and the vehicle's been taken off the road, so, bro. The wanted van man is awaiting a charging decision for ABH and criminal damage. He was also given a ticket for driving without due care and attention. You're lying. Don't keep lying because you'll really start to annoy me. The interceptors deal with liars day in, day out. Where does your cousin live? Nottingham. Mm, no, he doesn't. Yeah, he lives like he's from Nottingham, but he lives like in Leeds. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Keep trying. To work out when someone's trying to pull a fast one, there's a simple ABC. Assume nothing. What's going on? What's the crack? Why are you changing stuff uh, around? I don't know. I haven't changed any number plates. Believe nothing. So it's got the wrong plates on it? Yeah. But why? Why have you got the wrong plates well, on it? That's what I'm saying. It's... Why would I drive it like this? You know what I mean? That's a very good question. Challenge everything. But you've just stood and square on to me, man to man, and just lied straight up. Takes the piss, mate. Someone holding their hands up would be a rare treat. Out on the A610, Paul Charlesworth is behind the wheel of the unmarked 5 Series, joined by the Sarge, Jim Carrington. And to top it off, this pickup truck has got two interceptors on its tail. So it's got a report on it from the 18th of May. Interesting. Saying it may contain an individual who is disqualified until test passed. Well, we're about to find out. <laughs> I hear you. The unsuspecting driver is stopping to get fuel. I'm going to pull up the pump six, eight. And pretend you're putting some fuel in. And have a look. I was with his kids. Paul plays it cool. All right, mate. All right, mate, you. Time to play licensed or disqualified. Is it your motor, mate? No. Uh, it's fine, there's just some information that somebody disqualified might be driving this, but I don't know if that's you or not, so... Have you got a licence and everything? No. You haven't got mate, a licence? Definitely me. Right. That was quick. Do you got a licence on you or anything, mate? I ain't got one, mate. He's the disqual. It's me, uh... That's very honest of you, which I appreciate. Normally, they hear all sorts, but this band driver has spilled the beans in record time. I'm not going to be aggressive, am I? No, we don't need to no, we don't, no you've, got, you've got your kids with you, haven't you? So, yeah. yeah, you're just obviously not going to be able to drive. Wait, are you with, are you with this yes, flatbed yeah. over here? I'll get a lift with him. Get your stuff out then, kids. <laughs> it's an open and shut case. Well, you've been just out for the day with the kids on that, have you? Yeah, I just put the kids up, mate, yeah. Yeah. Paul will be taking the pickup truck off his hands and reporting the straight talking driver for driving whilst disqualified and no insurance. I'll need about five minutes of your time, mate, just to fill out the paperwork. Um, and then we'll give you some stuff so whoever it is can get it back. Easy. In his school days, firearms cop Paul wasn't a fan of drama. And luckily for him, it looks like this is one of the rare stops to pass without a song and a dance. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So I just have to tell you, you're being reported for driving whilst disqualified and driving without valid insurance. Basically, uh, you'll be summoned to court through the post. Yeah, well, just saying, you usually have to work for it. People usually try it on for at least five minutes. <laughs> Good point, are you? No. Oh, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, happy days, mate. As easy as one, two, three. Spot on, mate. All right, matey. You. Cheers for your honesty. Thank Take you. Take care. Check with everything, mate. All right, mate. All right, ta da. After a short but sweet stop, the driver was found guilty of driving whilst disqualified and no insurance. He got eight points and a £200 fine. I can't believe you just coughed it. <laughs> no, it always, always makes you you're almost like, oh, are you sure? Uh, just makes everyone's lives easier, though, doesn't it? All right, he'll be out in 
can be gone in five minutes. There's no hassle. These kids aren't upset about anything. Um, it just is what it is. It, it would always happen, and he knows that, so he's just saving himself some bother, really, which is uh, a refreshing change, I would say. But saving some bother by telling the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, doesn't come as easy to some. Keeping an eye on the sleepy streets of Worksop are Gav Hall and Mike Grant from the Knife Crime Team. Check this car out here, though, here. It's just parked up in here and see what's up. An occupied Audi Q2 in a dark car park has got this wily interceptor's nose twitching. Oh, wait a minute, mate. I'll leave the keys in a second. Yeah, no, with me. Time to exercise the old ABC. Are you, mate? You're right. S sorry, pal, I couldn't tell you then. You're right. Yeah, I'm just waiting for my girlfriend. Uh, yeah. No worries. Is it your car? No, it's my daughter's. Are you insured on it? Yeah. Right, we'll do some checks on you, buddy. What, you got a licence on you? Uh, well, I'm not driving at a minute. My girlfriend's driving. I'm just sitting here waiting for You're her. You're just sitting in the driver's seat, are you? No, no, no worries, mate. He claims to be sat in the driver's seat to keep warm. Uh, my girlfriend's just gone with her friend. She'll be back in a minute. Well, well who's going to be driving it? My partner. I've just jumped in. But there's the definite whiff of porky pies in the air. You got a licence yourself? No, no. What are no, you? A minute, no. Uh, Abandoned. Privacy? Oh, you're banned. Yeah, no worries, mate. Yeah. No drugs or nothing? No, nothing. Are you a drug user? Uh, I am, yes, but You are. What do you take? Methadone. So if I search you now and the car, I'm not going to find anything. Is that what you're saying? No, there's nothing in this car. Right. Nothing. Okay. Gav's got a feeling something's definitely dodgy. He might be waiting to score if we can get the car parked up and uh, plot up on him. But is the chilly band driver going to become the team's next hottest target? In workshop, Gav and Mike are checking out an Audi parked up in a dimly lit car park. Are you, mate? You're right. The band driver claims he's perched on the driver's seat to keep warm. You got a licence on you? Yeah, my girlfriend's just gone with her friend. She'll be back in a minute. Well, well who's going to be driving it? My partner. <laughs> yeah, I don't know <laughs> but Gav's not convinced. So if I search you now and the car, I'm not going to find anything. Is that what you're saying? No, there's nothing in this car. Right. Nothing. OK. This Derby County supporting officer's been with the force over 16 years, long enough to know when someone's trying to pull the wool over his eyes. He might be waiting to score if we could get the car parked up and uh, plot up on him. Just let me know, guys, when I can pull off and leave him to it, because he's fed me some crap that his missus is going to get in the car. He's sat in the driving seat to keep warm. But uh, I say he could have gear on him now or he could be waiting to score. I'd rather let him pull off and at least we'll get him on the driving. In case he does drive, Gav arranges a knife crime team welcoming party. Yeah, if you go down the sandy lane from that mini RA, Ken, and take that first left and sit there, then I'm going to pull off, and if the other guys sit up somewhere near Premier, we'll have it covered. Is that all right? With all escape routes covered, they say their goodbyes. I was just... I was just making sure there were no warrants and that for you. Yeah, all right, no mate. Problem. All right, take it easy, all yeah, right. Well make sure you don't drive as well. No, I won't all, drive, right. No. all right, buddy, thanks no. a lot. Bye bye. Right. They lead the scene, but Gav has a sneaking suspicion that they'll meet again soon. That car in the car park, he's a disqualified driver. He reckons his missus has driven there and he's just keeping warm in the driver's seat, which is just rubbish. He'll, um, he'll be driving. So we've got plain car and uh, a plain car up there watching. An undercover officer spots the bloke leaving, but he's on foot. That guy's got out of his car and he's walked up yeah. round to the school near to where we were. He's probably checking out to see um, if we're still in the area. And then he'll go back to the car and try and drive it off. With the coast seemingly clear, driver's gone back to the car park. The suspect breaks his promise to Gav and drives off. Game on. Down towards Premier. Towards us away, isn't it? From
The blokes fail to stop for another knife crime unit, so Gav races to intercept. He's gone back around the circle, mate. Yeah. But the drama is short-lived. You got him? Yes, sir, thank you. Good shout, 1199. Appreciate it. He is a DQ driver. The suspect has headed straight back to the car park and its friends reunited. I thought you weren't going to drive. Uh, I'm sick of waiting for her. Dan Mottishaw has the man in hand. Right, come back Crap, over here, buddy. It. Come back over here. Cool. Come just back over here so we can start getting a search on you. <laughs> All right. Come on, come on. See ya. See ya. Keep gloves on. Yeah. Got it on, you shouldn't have, buddy. You know what As the team give the car the once-over... He's kicking off. You don't what? start talking hey. like that, do you? What? You want to start messing about? Like We're straight on the floor. Like right? What? Like what? All right. Stop. I says resisting. all I've done is have um, stop this thing and stop oh, acting like this, shall we? Relax, buddy. Calm. 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 calm down. I'm calm down. Right. Let's try again, shall we? The search soon reveals a dodgy package. Yeah, some crack cocaine. By the looks of it. It's a good result. A band driver off the road and another victory for the famous copper's nose. Usually when you, you get that feeling, um, you're usually right. If he was with his missus, I don't see why he'd get out of the passenger seat to jump in the driving seat to keep warm. You know, that's the best he could do, thinking on his feet, but it hasn't worked. The driver was found guilty of disqualified driving, no insurance and failing to stop. He received a six-week suspended sentence, had to pay a total of £213 in surcharging costs and was disqualified from driving for 12 months. Police! Come to the door! You come to no harm! Shots fired! Crime never sleeps. But neither... Police officer with a taser! ..do the cops. Battling on the front line. Get on the floor! Get on the floor now! Are Nottinghamshire's finest. Highly trained pursuit drivers. Oh, oh God. Vehicle failing to stop. Specialists in entry and search. Oh, my word. There is multi kilos of cannabis in here. Rapid response firearms officers. Oh, please! I'm going to see him now! He's on to your dog! And the crime stopping force. Jesus, oh, now! Of the dog unit. Stop it! Wherever the battle takes them. On the ground! They'll never back down. Stay, 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 stay! Because come at the hour. Yeah, it's only two. We're underneath you now, Empath. Come at the interceptors. <laughs> Put it this way, mate. You level that gun at us, you would have got shot. Coming up. Seven up and still fighting. Stop resisting! Give me a hand. At the sharp end with the knife crime team. Oh, it's hot now. Still sharp. And that's the... And... It's going to be a decamp. Stand by. A foot race with a wanted man. To find people selling drugs. Yep, hanging around. Yeah, they're dodge. It pays to have an idea who's buying them. There's a couple of users sat waiting at the entrance to the Castle Retail Park, the entrance on the corner of Hartley Road where it meets Radford Boulevard. They definitely are users. Both got a bit of shopping with them though. But they went into the retail park and they just look like they're waiting for someone. I'm just going to wait on Prospect Street, which is just off uh, Churchfield Lane. The knife crime team are tailing two suspected users, clocked in Radford by Gavin Mike. Then tracked by Sergeant Daly through a retail park. 
Yeah, the sat on the steps waiting. A mixed race male and a mountain bike's met up with those two users. Gone out of my line of sight, like... We don't know whether or not he's a dealer. But well, they suspect he is. Turn that stick, please. We need a unit in the retail park and we need some on the outside of it. We'll go in. They move to surround the retail park. Yeah, we're just turning left on to Hartley, so we'll be at that uh, pedestrian entrance. Mike's going in on foot. I'll drop you here. To help the Sarge nick the suspected dealer on the bike. Mike keeps fit by scuba diving, but he's no slouch on dry land. And he'll need to be quick. Because the Sarge has grabbed the suspect and needs help urgently. Where are you? Mike arrives to find it kicking off big time. Get me out of your back now! I've got a taser on your back! I've got a taser on your back! Release your arms now! Release your arms! Release your arms! <laughs> the man's not playing ball. Get out of your back now! Stop resisting! Stop resisting! Release your arms! And they're struggling to control him. Luckily, the cavalry's here. The suspect's putting up a hell of a fight. Right, you're going to get sprayed. Stop, stop resisting. And earns a blast of parva spray in the face. You're going to get sprayed. Turn your head away, Matt. Turn your head away. Yeah, sorry. Right, right spray. Even with five cops on him and a face full of parva, he's not in cuffs. They need more manpower. We're in the entrance we made. And it's en route. Where is everyone? Joe and Adam descend on total chaos. And a suspect still free of cuffs. Stay there! Stop moving! I'm double cuff it. I'm double cuff it. Loosen your hands up now! It's now a seven man job. Right, right. right. And the only way they can secure the suspect is to link two sets of cuffs together. On your side, mate. Stop resisting, mate. On your side, on your side. But he hasn't finished struggling. Relax. Shut up, then. Let's get some leg straps on as well, because he's been kicking out. I can't see. Stop moving around, then, like we've told you. Get him in a single pair of cuffs. So he can't reach for his pockets. I'm not reaching. You are, mate. We've just watched you three times. Hang on, I've got my camera. At last, he's secure in a single set of cuffs. Calm down. We'll get you up in a minute. We'll get you up. Calm down. Just calm down, man. Yeah, we're going to need a ramp, mate. Mate, you're under arrest on suspicion of being concerned in spy class A drugs. That was quite the tussle. Strong lad. He's managed to break free of me the first time. Yeah. But I've just rugby tackled him off his bike. Yeah. I've not been able to keep him on the floor, but that Mike's joined me. Uh, We've managed to just get him on the floor. And Mike's not come out unscathed. He's had to come in, he's given me a nosebleed. Huh? Kick me in the nose, mate. Kick you in the nose? Yeah, he's up a little bit. Right. Right. right, you're also under arrest on suspicion of assaulting this officer here. Obviously, in the struggle when Matt and me went to the floor, um, he's lashed out of his arms, we're struggling to get behind his back, and at some point, his armour has later hit me in the face causing my nose to bleed. Uh, so obviously we've got a police assault there, which he's obviously been arrested for as well. And it took a quite a large amount of officers to obviously take him to the floor and get him detained safely. Uh, unfortunately, this is sometimes part of our job that we have to put up with. <sighs> I've had worse. <laughs> the suspect, it's weed, was carrying four bags of green. I think it's weed, mate. And a sum of cash. Uh, we'll get him in the car and we'll just get, get him gone. He's off to the nick, while Gav and Mike... Oh, I've split my head open yeah. as well. <laughs> I didn't even know about my head. <laughs> ..are on their way to an address. Before they arrive, intel comes through that it may contain weapons. 
the historical interval 2016 is that he keeps a shotgun at this is address in his bedroom. Address, and he's been in prison because he was in possession of knives. They've got permission to search the property. As soon as your single crew, do you want to go round the rear, please, mate? So, okay. <coughs> and they arrive with a door key found on the suspect. Ready, mate? Ready? Yeah, go on. Hello? Hello? Police. I've got a search authority. Come in now and have a chat with you. Inside are two women, one with a baby. What's your partner's name? You might as well just tell me, Chris. I'm not saying anything. OK, he's in custody. He's been arrested. He's safe and well, but he's been arrested. We've got an authority to search because the offence that he's been arrested for um, means that the inspector can give his authority to come and search. We can't tell you what we're searching for. But it looks a bit like that. Obviously, I see you've got a spliff in your hand. Um, we are going to search thoroughly and we'll get a, a, a drug dog in as well. True to Gav's word, the property's given a proper going over and it doesn't take long to make a worrying discovery. right next to the, the entrance hall. Yeah. It's quite new, still sharp. Very nice thing. Hot on the heels of the machete are a box full of cash. Ah. Jars stuffed with multiple deal bags of weed. Nice deal bags. Suspected cocaine. Some class A here. Yeah. It's THC oil. And what appears to be a synthetic cannabis substitute. THC is one of the um, that components in cannabis. It's illegal in the UK. And I think what he's doing is he's decanting it into smaller bottles and selling it. Obviously, you can see the kind of things that we're going to be taking with us. Cannabis and cash and things like that. Is that yours? It, I have to ask you. It, Oh, OK. So where does he live normally, then, if he doesn't live here? You don't know where your boyfriend lives? If the boyfriend can't be linked to this property, then the two girls in it have questions to answer because someone's responsible for the assortment of drugs and the knife. We are the knife crime team, and invariably, when we find people with weapons, we find them with drugs as well. So it just shows that the two go hand in hand. Luckily, the guy arrested earlier didn't have anything like this to hand. Could have had a, one of these knives in his waistband that he was reaching for. We really don't know what we're dealing with, but he's put up a, an extreme level of sort of um, aggression and resistance to try and get away from us, and unfortunately, Mike's had to take one for the team and take a kick in the nose. The suspect who took on seven cops and lost was found guilty of assaulting an officer. He was fined £200 and ordered to pay £125 compensation. He's also under investigation for possession with intent to supply, as are the two girls discovered in the property full of drugs. No further action was taken regarding the knife found at the house, but it's been confiscated as part of the investigation. Coming up... A house call on a wanted man... It's the police! I need you to open the door for me, otherwise the door is being put in. A blunt assessment of a daytime driver... Stinks of alcohol, slow, slow in his speech. Surprised why police have pulled him over for driving like an idiot. And something exciting for the top shelf. Well, there we go. Interceptors carry a ton of kit to keep them safe. <laughs> That's a snug fit. The trick is trying to run in it. You reckon it weighs 15k with the stabby vest? Yeah, about that, yeah. It's... In weather like this, it's just, well, obliterates me. I mean, when you're coming up against young lads, track suits, trainers, and we're big, thick boots, you've got the, your body armour, and then your vest with your handcuffs, your baton, your taser, everything else. But I'd rather wear this and not get stabbed than potentially lose someone in foot chase.
Phil and John are in the Mark V series, looking for a Ford Focus. So, yeah. wanted me in the net. And they'll be glad of protective kit today. Confirmed, still whiskey Mike for serious assault. Because the drivers wanted on suspicion of assault. Yeah. Received intel says he's uh, possibly not got a full license either. He's running through DL, please. Yeah, he's only got a uh, provisional license. Received. That's it. There he goes. Attention. He's uh, looked very shifty then, mate. Attention. A swift Yui. Secure tech. And ditch the laptop. And they're after him. Tango 83 got sighted to that vehicle, Ford Focus. It's pinged the camera, shows uh, males, possibly whiskey Mike. He's starting to drive slightly erratically. If I can have a view on his travel, it's not a failed stop at the moment, but I'm anticipating it maybe. Phil once worked in a factory making sweet tins, but these days he's a quality street cop. To uh, top desk, can we potentially have a look at preemptives if we get enough units travelling? And he wants more units to stop the focus before the driver can make a break for it. Energy tap preemptive. Attention. The guy behind the wheel may be wanted on suspicion of serious assault. He's looking down the outside, isn't he? He's leaving a gap as well. Yeah. So the cavalry can't get here soon enough. Vehicle is in lane one, lane one, with intention of going left onto Rosemary Street. He's not liking that, is he? No. 217, I'll set up a stinger site, uh, end of Rosemary Street with um, Chester Road. A stinger team ahead are rushing to roll out a bed of spikes to take out his tyres. Get received, we're left, 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 Rosemary Street. Approaching Stinger. Approaching Stinger site. This is it. Stinger's not set up. Really? The moment's passed. Passing Stinger. Yeah, 10 4. Passing Stinger site. And the suspect puts his toe down. The we've spooked in now is uh, now accelerating through. Yeah. He's hung a left. From 8 2, this is a now failed stop, repeat failed stop. And he's heading for the hills. Just petrol and uh, wait keep back up with the fifty, we can stop me. Dead end. Phil moves to pin the Ford in place. The driver makes a handbrake turn and spins out of the way. It's got to be a decap, stand by. Now he's over the bonnet and off on his toes. Get him quick. Shorts, trainers, and a head start versus armour, stab vests, and size nines. I've lost him. Phil heard a door slam. Now he's not in here. Is there anybody coming running around? Striped top? Yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> Nearby, John directs reinforcements. Last item, we ditched it round here, so he's gone into here and he's either come out down here or further around the back. While Phil keeps up the search, heading for a block of flats. From 756, has he got any connections in that area? Intel says the suspect has connections with a nearby flat. Yeah, 10-4, that might be where we've heard the slam. Are you on... Are you yeah. on nine? Quick, so this is where the slam. Just keep an eye on this side, I'll keep the other. Do you know which keep one? Keep an eye on that side, I'll keep an eye on this side. I'll get some money while that door's going in. From uh, 756, I've got this address front and back. If I can get another unit to me, I'll put some shouts in and then I can put the door in. Can we have uh, local units to our location? It's the police. I need you to open the door for me, otherwise the door is being put in. It's the police. John tries the front door. Open the door. Open that. Someone's in, but they're not the suspect. And they're not happy. Right, is anybody else in the address? 
Okay, okay. Is there anybody else in the address? Is there anybody else in the address? Have a look. I'm asking you, mate. Is there anybody in the address? No. A sweep of the property. Front fell, we're inside. Reveals there's no one in but the guy who answered the door. He's not here, Bob. Right, when did you last see him? Yes, this morning. Right, okay, okay. No idea where he might be then if he's not here. I'm not clue. No. What relation is he to you, mate? He isn't. Sorry? He isn't. Just an associate, is he? Wherever the wanted man is, he's not here. Thank you, thanks for your cooperation. Oh, I'm annoyed. But they haven't given up hope yet. So he's either still in this area or yeah. he's come out and carried on down alleyway onto that main road, hasn't he? Straight through there. The only other thing is if he's still... He's gone to ground still somewhere. Still knocking around. Yeah. Whichever way he's gone, he's given them the slip. If he's uncled down somewhere because he's out of breath, um, if we sort of disturb him, he might pop up again. Or if he thinks pretty much we've moved on, we might get a glimpse of him. Even with eyes in the sky... Yeah, live links on for uh, your info so you've got to see the uh, drone footage. It seems a forlorn search. You haven't seen anybody come running around with a blue and white striped top, have you? No. No? Just go back this way, sorry, mate. Talk around this, this side. Hey, you've not seen the blue wandering around with a white and blue striped top, have you? No. No, crack you. No, got away. I think he knows the area better than we do with all the rat runs and what have you. The good thing is, though, is as we've pulled alongside him, he's got out, we've got ideal footage of him. Although he's got away from us, we know who he is. His time will come. The fleet-footed Einstein has left enough clues to ensure that won't be long. Including his name, his registered address, his car... Baseball bat. I can't see any ball, though. ..and his passenger. He obviously doesn't think much of you, does he? He's left you carrying the can. Huh? He's left you carrying the can. <laughs> so what's his reason for doing that, then? Uh, I'm not clue. So where are we likely to go and find him now? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Honestly. He wouldn't tell us if you did, anyway. The disappearing driver had his day in court for assault, dangerous driving, driving without a licence and insurance. He pleaded guilty and got a total of nine months behind bars and was banned from driving for 18 months. I sit, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, stop. I've done this job for 21 years and the carnage that I've seen through drink driving. Drink drivers account for more than one in 10 deaths on UK roads. So you have failed the breath test, mate. For me, it should be zero tolerance when it comes to drink driving. It's one of my pet hates. Most who get nicked for drink driving learn their lesson, hopefully without harming anyone, but thousands go on to re-offend each year. It's like a hardcore minority who will just do it regularly without really any great concern because, you know, so far so good, never had a crash. They think they're driving awesome. They, they're like, yeah, I'm driving really well, and they're so not driving really well. I've been to a few fatal car accidents because of drink drivers, and it's just horrific. It's the middle of the afternoon, and nothing much is doing on the roads. Oh, you may. Sergeant Johnny Groves is at the wheel of a marked Octavia alongside Adam Moroz. And after a slow start to their shift, a sniff of action. It's a Ford Focus in black, uh, registered in Humberside, but they've told DVLA they no longer keep her. Nice. The Ford Focus ahead is registered to a woman, but seems to have a man in the driver's seat. So, if it's a male driver... I can't see. Very erratic. Is it a female? The lady. No, it's the lad. Is it? Yeah. And the lad appears to be on the wrong side of the road. Ooh! Without warning, he weaves into the path of an oncoming car, missing a head-on by inches. Like an idiot. Going to pull him over. Who, me? Yeah, you. I'm just getting to get into the space, mate. Yeah, I want to talk to you. 
Mate, hey, are you drunk? No. You sure? Yeah. Your driving's a little bit erratic, buddy. Why? Well, because you've been slowing up and speeding down. You've just gone round the cars there and nearly crashed into oncoming traffic while we've been behind you. Yeah? I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, I can smell a bit of alcohol on you as well. Yeah. Okay, so come take a seat in our car. We're going to be breathalyzing you. Are you insured to drive this vehicle? There's no mail on the insurance for it. Come on, it's going to take all the arm, pal. Okay. I'm just going over here. Okay. Take a seat in there for me, please, mate. You got a licence, mate? No. Oh. No. You got any insurance? No. no. Oh. Just uh, driving along, getting a sit. Oh. As you do. Mozza says the best thing about the job is the variety of people you meet. But he'd rather not meet drink drivers. He stinks of alcohol, slow, slow in his speech. Surprised why police have pulled him over for driving like an idiot. They've radioed for a spare breathalyzer tube. Meanwhile, the driver, there go. Yes, yes, Sit there. not content with weaving all over the road, is weaving all over Johnny's back seat. Just sit back there, please. I'm, I'm sat back. Right, sit back where you were. Go back over there. Whose car is it? It's a friend. Do they know you've got it? No. They don't know you've got the car? No. OK. So what's your friend's name? Sorry? What's your friend's name whose car it is? <laughs> don't matter. <laughs> well, it does, because you've got to get locked up for twock if you don't tell us whose car it is. He's staring down the barrel of a taking without consent charge. So if we can contact them and find out whether they want to make a complaint about yeah, you taking it or not, yeah, then that makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. If it's your car and you're just using it in... It's not my car. What, so whose car is it? It doesn't matter. It does matter. It does matter whose car it is, doesn't it? Because obviously you're using it, aren't you? I'm using it. Yeah, so if, you, if you've borrowed it from them, we need to speak to them and make sure they're all right with you using it, because it's going to get seized. So either you're lying or it's your car and you're just pretending that it's your friends. Right, so it's your friends. So what's their name? OK. Either the car belongs to a Mrs Matter, first name doesn't, or the driver is in trouble. It's up to you, he wants to play it, mate. When we last dealt with by the police? Arrested? Yeah. Uh, 2000 and... Ten, I think. What for? Drink driving. Drink driving. Well, time to find out if you've learned your lesson, because a breathalyzer tube has arrived. He's bladded. Is he? Thank you, yeah. What have you had to drink today? Uh, about six cans. Six cans could put him way over the limit. Right, because of the manner of your driving, the fact you smell of alcohol and you've got open alcohol containers in your car, I require you to provide me with a specimen of breath of analysis. Uh, have you had an dr alcoholic drink in the last 20 minutes? Yes. Yeah, how long ago, mate? Uh, about seven or eight minutes ago. Yeah, we'll have to get about 10 minutes, then, mate, till we do this. He's, um, he's steaming. <laughs> There's one useful way to spend the next 10 minutes, and that's fessing up to who owns the car. Did, did you give my sergeant the details of who the car belongs to, or not? I'm, I'm not prepared to give it to him. You're not prepared to give us those details? No. OK. Oh, no, it's, it belongs to my brother's girlfriend. Fastest U-turn ever. The brother's girlfriend's name checks out, but there's still the matter of the potential drink driving. Lovely, thanks. I think he's going to be a free five for Pozalco. We're just waiting to confirm that. Though it's not really a question of whether he's over the limit of 35. Just one long, continuous breath until I tell you to stop, OK? Go, 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 on. Good lad. But by how much? Right, you've blown 106. Legal limit is 35, OK? So, at this moment in time, 106, mate. Yeah, so I'm arresting you on suspicion of driving a motor vehicle on a road while over the prescribed limit for alcohol. Do you understand what's happening? Yeah. 106. He's blown 106, um, which is obviously over three times the drink drive limit. He's not particularly with it. I'm not particularly with it. Mate, your driving was horrendous. That's the reason that we... Yeah, but what about my attitude? He's not the attitude of a sensible driver. What's made you drive today, then? 
Uh, I want a small bit. You want a small bit? Yeah, but I could be asked to walk to Tesco's. He doesn't seem to realise how dangerous he is. And back at the Nick... Go on, then, dude. Yeah, the evidential breath test keep going, 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 keep going. Couldn't be more of a formality. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Thank you. Take a seat. Come here often. Oh, this is my third. Huh? Third. Right. Okay, so if the results are 108 and 107. Lowest score counts. So he's more than three times the legal limit, and it turns out completely delusional. I just feel safe. I feel safe to drive. It's, um, so I feel like I'm not putting anybody else at risk. Unfortunately for him, but fortunately for the rest of us, the courts disagreed. After pleading guilty to drink driving, the 107 microgram man was ordered to pay fines and costs totaling £389 to attend alcohol treatment and banned from driving for 26 months. He will also be subject to electronic monitoring for six weeks. The consequences could have been far worse. Glad we, uh, glad we got hold of him. Drink driving off the streets. Coming up. Someone's in possession of a knife, someone's in possession of a chain. Firearms go on a weapons hunt. Rude. How not to handle a friendly warning. Where you handling me, free man? What the? F and what are you calling me for? We need to get existential questions on the A38. Real. I am real. I'm real right here now, right now. It's late morning, and out on patrol across the county are numerous firearms officers, including Lewis and Jim, and Lisa and Lee, stars of the firearms firmament, and occasionally, Channel 5. Oh, here we go, look. <laughs> I've seen you on tele. Ah, oh. <laughs> unlucky. Have you got it, Dale? I think it's empty. <laughs> Have I got it? Do you know what? She owes me cakes now, because I said if one person pulls us over today, she owes cakes. So you've just got me a nice cream cake. Thank you. Never, <laughs> never. Cake finds are a special treat for jobbing firearms officers. But sometimes you want something a touch more savoury. I've got a real quick craving for salt and vinegar hula hoops. Just come out with them. Are you pregnant? No. But pastries and potato hoops will have to wait. There's the other ARV. I'm gonna wait up here. Lewis, Jim, Lisa and Lee have been called in to help stop a van travelling on the A38. Sitting here. It's a good place. It's trapped. If it comes here, it can't come off. The driver's suspected of serious assault. Yesterday, lunchtime, caller reports people fighting outside our house with knives and chains. Someone's in possession of a knife, someone's in possession of a chain. Cops go there and somebody's got quite a nasty hand injury and the injury is consistent with an air weapon. It's enough to put you off your hula hoops. Yep. So this van is registered to a lad. He's been named for the job and is wanted for it. And he was in company with... Got it? Yep. There. To the team, we've got contact with the subject vehicle. He's just come through the lights at Junction 28 on the RA, so stand by. Up ahead, Lisa takes the lead in her armed response vehicle. I fancy we we're going for the A38. In fact, it's in there, lurking lane one. While Lewis and Jim fall in behind. Did you see who was in it? Did you see just the one male occupant? That's all right. I could see, mate, to be fair, but I might be wrong. I think it was just the one occupant, the driver, we believe. Um, vehicle is continuing. We're at 6 0 in what is a 7 0 on a dual carriageway on the A38. And he's making now gone into lane two. No, he's done it. Um, and we've pulled up the green ATM. ATM? Sorry, lane two. ATS. <laughs> got a cake finder for that, for calling the traffic light on a cash machine. <laughs> Lisa may be mixing up automatic traffic signals with automated telemachines, but she's getting the important information right. It's just done a weird manoeuvre. 
Yeah. Um, I think he's aware of my presence now. Yeah. He's um, turned a left, left onto stand-by. Really it'll come to a natural issue, you know. Lise, if it comes to a natural, we'll obviously our hand will be forced. Uh, I would prefer uh, the third car with us, though. Um, obviously, I'll call any strike on you as vehicle one. After two decades on the force, Jim's officially been made sergeant. The new Sarge is calling the shots today. Yeah, we've got this um, red ATS traffic signal. I'm just wondering whether we should stick it on now. And he's tough decisions to make. How uh, safe are we here, though? I'm going to say hold. Yeah, OK. The target is suspected of assault, so Jim decides to play it safe. I'm going to say hold, mate, because I know the third car's close. Jim, where are you, please? I'd say we're about three minutes behind you. We're now approaching the um, red ATM. ATS, Lisa. Two. Why does Lisa keep calling a traffic light cash point? As they pass another automated traffic signal, Sergeant Jim finally has his ducks in a row. Yes, yes. We have now got the third vehicle with us, dog handlers in support. The preference is a reinforced stop at a natural slowing or stopping feature. He keeps gesticulating out of the window as if uh, to pull him over, pointing his finger towards the curb direction. The suspect may have an air rifle, but he's not calling the shots here. You can't just say, oh, well, we'll just do it here because he's telling us to, do you know what I mean? I don't want him to dictate when we stop him, if that makes sense. We dictate when he stops, not the other way around. Yeah. And we've decided he stops now. And um, we put on. Let's do it. Switch off, mate. I've got my dog in the passenger seat. Switch it off, okay, mate. mate. Switch the engine off. What's your name? Can I, can I not take my dog? I've just spoke to one on your phone, no, mate, told you I'm coming in. Stand hand gestures, look, look at me. see, that's the thing. You wanted, mate, for a job from yeah, yesterday. Yes, I know, yeah? I know, mate. Do you understand what you're being nicked for, mate? Job from no, yesterday? No. Yeah. What are you trusting me up for? I'm not. Wow. He knows about yesterday's incident and claims he's spoken to the cops about it already, but it's all a bit confusing. Two geezers have rung my phone yes, that they had nothing to do with this job. I explained to him, that's how you know I were coming home. He'll need to straighten it out at the station. The van will need to um, recover for use in the commission of crime pending the search. Jesus Christ, get me to the station. They want transport to the Nick before this boils over. What are you calling me for? We need to get some local cops to come and scoop you up, me. mate. I'm allowed to stand on the spot. Are you seeing this? Look, I'm not allowed to move like this. No, my hands are behind my back. behind your back. If you fall over, I've, I've got to try and stop you from your face, haven't one. I? Next it's one. for your own safety, mate. My own safety. Yes. You're real. I am real. I'm real right here now, right now. Yeah. We're just going to shift your van out the road. That's going to get recovered as well, well in case mean? it was at this job yesterday. Open. Are you listening to me, just not bothering? Is this reasonable? Basically, the reason you wanted because you've just told, told, you told us. You just, just spoke right to them this Don't morning on the phone. Don't shout. I've spoke to them on the no phone. Who's them? Just come back to hand myself. When have I said you're lying? Yeah. You're taking me away. No, we're waiting for a local car to come and scoop right, you up. Cause I'm not going to put you in a firearms car, car, am I? Well, he, 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 he's within your right to say nothing. He is secure. He's just giving us a load of chelp at the roadside. So we just need some support to get him in a police vehicle and get him away, really. Meanwhile, there's a dog to deal with. Here. We Go on. Move. Snappy. He does have a little go, then. Jim reckons a bit nippy. It's happy, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just... And a van to search. So, they want the cursory to see if there's an air rifle kicking about. Hold tight. Not this, not this dog biting my arm off, either. But it's all right, I just don't touch Go it. They're looking for a chain, a knife and an air rifle. Yeah. This chain, there is one in the van, but it's not the biggest, most heavy-duty thing in the world. One down. Rude. So, I'm not entirely sure what he needs this for. That's two. Oh, that's broke. I'm glad you said curse research. I'll be here all day. Why am I doing this? I'm in charge here. But I think that might be a result. <sighs> Well, there we go. Full house. So, job yesterday apparently involved some kind of air rifle. 
I'll get hold of the OIC again, the detective, and see if they can describe the weapon a bit more. That is definitely an air rifle, some more powerful than others, traditionally used for like vermin control and target shooting and stuff. The problem with weapons like this is that you or I won't necessarily know that that is an air weapon, and if somebody starts waving this around in the street or pointing it at you or I, people aren't going to know whether it's a viable firearm or just an air weapon or not. It's going to strike fear into people. Imagine this could be the one using the job yesterday, so good result. The man from the van is awaiting a charging decision for possession of an air weapon with intent to cause fear of violence, possession of an offensive weapon, affray and assault. If found guilty, he could be looking at time behind bars. Coming up... I search you. You've got cannabis in your pocket. No, man. Not yours. A smoker in denial. You're under <laughs> arrest, mate, on suspicion of possessing cannabis. they're having to actually be held by string to support the actual plant growth. In the world of cannabis, interceptors are far more interested in taking down farmers and dealers than casual smokers. It's uh, overwhelming the smell. You wouldn't want to be working in here for too long. But that doesn't mean they'll turn a blind eye to people skinning up in public. Join us if can play please. Yep, come into play now. Least of all in a kid's play park. Here. Gav and Joe have called for assistance, with three lads rolling a joint by the roundabouts. Hey, hope you all right? Yeah. Good plan. Whoa, whoa. This guy's sound, but his buddy is giving Gav a right load of grief. Mate, you can be as difficult as you like about it. I've just seen you about to skin you out. You're so tough for no reason, literally. You, can, you came up to us to say, oh, you're skinning some, uh, let something me speak, like let this. Let me tell you, crystal clear so you can understand. Yeah, tell me. Right? This here, we get lots of drug activity around here. Yeah. I've seen you and him with a green tub on there. Look like you're about ready to roll up a joint. Yeah, it looked like yeah. it. You yeah, look like it was going to fight at you. No, what's I'm explaining to you. OK, I search you. You've got cannabis in your pocket. Not mine. Not yours. Well, you're under arrest, mate, on suspicion of possessing cannabis. Gav's a Derby County fan, so he's learned to keep calm in the face of adversity. But this guy is testing his patience. All right, you do not say All right, please? Yes. You have, you're telling me about criminals, this is criminal you activity, yeah? You understand that? Well, we'll come deal with it, but uh, you want to be basically difficult about it. I'm not difficult about it. You literally put cuffs on me for no reason. Are you allowed to put cuffs on me for no reason? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, there is for a reason. For no reason? That's why I've done it. What reason? What reason is it? You didn't prove me no reason. The other two lads search will be free to go. Your mate's got an attitude, hasn't he? Yeah. What attitude? You walk up to us, you cook me for no reason. Well, yeah, how am I not going to have an attitude? You're holding my hand up. Mess with me. But this one's attitude is going to get him into trouble. He's tensing up. Don't say difficult. What are you doing? Understand. What are you doing? I didn't do relax. I didn't do Get nothing. Aggressive with me. I didn't do nothing. Don't walk with me to the car. I didn't do anything. What are you doing? Nicking you. Can you let me can hold my hands no, properly? Stop swearing. Uh, How can I not swear if you're handling me, free man? What the? Stop swearing. How can I not swear? Would you not swear in this situation? No. And he wouldn't skin up in a park either. Pushing me around and shit. Ginger bitch. <laughs> Quite the charmer. What's up with you? You got an attitude What's problem. What's up with you me? Are. Attitude yeah, problem? Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. have attitude problem yeah. in my situation? Yeah? No, you know you've been you a dickhead. Attitude from the start. I've got it, I've got it. My hand's bleeding now. That's your fault. It's my fault? Yes. You're pushing me around and then I start trying not to fall down? That's because you became confrontational. <laughs> and the way you're going, you'll have to confront a trip to custody. Or you can toe the line and walk with a warning. Telling me that I'm smoking as belief. Listen to me. Yeah, it but can't be more have you, have you got, Mate, mate you've got talking. an attitude problem. Okay. Listen to what I'm saying to you. Some people, Listen. like, they're just not used to being told, like, this is what's going to happen. It, it just wants it to be on his terms, which is probably what he's had all his life. Never had any boundaries. And now, of course, he's come up against the popo, and we're telling him that that's, that's not life. It's not how it works. This area, we're getting drug dealing and drug use. Yeah, so the no, drug dealer is not You're talking, drug. you don't listen. No, but he can't see that he's done any wrong, despite the fact he's just 
on a park with little kids playing on. Unreal. I've seen you skinning up a joint over there. I've walked up to you, I've told you, I think that you're skinning up cannabis. I've searched you and you've got cannabis in your pocket. Now you're trying to play out that you don't know who it is. I could deal with this little bit of cannabis at the roadside and you're making it difficult. If I want to, I can take you into custody. I'd rather deal with you here and now. But you need to cut the attitude out. You understand what I'm saying? Right. He calms down and they take the cuffs off him. What I can do is a small amount of cannabis, rather than take you into custody, I can do you an interview right now that will take me about one or two minutes. I've got the questions already written out in a little form. You're eligible for a warning, what we call a cannabis warning. Cannabis is illegal, full stop. You know, I'm not justifying it in any way. But you know, if you're smoking it in your bedroom at home, the truth of the matter is that the public in general probably don't care. But you know, when you smoke it on a park, with a, when there's a woman there with two young kids, like, you know, like, have some respect for other people. The gobby joint roller got away with a cannabis warning. If he's caught with weed again, he won't be so lucky. Clearly, he doesn't like authority, and he even disagrees with the fact that you found cannabis in his pocket. He's just a very disagreeable sort of guy. So I think we'll probably see him again. And the interceptors are back next Wednesday night at 8. Protecting the interest, interests of the powerful by any means necessary. Professionals is brand new drama starting in just a moment over on 5 Action. New next here on Channel 5. Alison's grand council house is too big to look after. So who's going to be up for a council house swap? Find out in just a mo. You come to no harm. Shots fired. Crime never sleeps. But neither. Police officer with the taser. Do the cops. Battling on the front line. Get on the floor. Get on the floor now. Are Nottinghamshire's finest. Highly trained pursuit drivers. Oh, oh God. Vehicle failing to stop. Specialists in entry and search. Oh, my word. There is multi kilos of cannabis in here. Rapid response firearms officers. Up there! Edward, can see him now! He's on shooting now! And the crime stopping force. Chase out now! Of the dog unit. Stop it! Wherever the battle takes them. On the ground! They'll never back down. Stay the same, stay the same! Because come at the hour. Yeah, it's only two, we're underneath you now, Empath. Come at the interceptors. <laughs> Put it this way, mate, you level that gun at us, you would have got shot. Coming up. Left, left, left on a dirt track. A breathless off-road pursuit leads cops into no man's land. Where is this going? A young tearaway takes Lee for a cross-country run. Stay down, let the dog off! And hey! Kingo gets a shocking confession. Just, right. just you mean you're in jail? I'm just trying to murder a... my daughter. It's a warm summer evening in Knott's. Sergeant Jim Carrington and Lewis Marshall are on patrol when a familiar foe rears its head. It's like Picasso's coming out here again at 10 o'clock at night up north. That could be a go of that. Go. You heard the man, Sarge. Gun it. We've got a vehicle pinging cameras. We're doing the same last night, and for the past couple of weeks, it's failed to stop on numerous occasions. Please, we've got one unit up there, we're a fair way off, but we're going to put ourselves up there. Hopefully, we can get it and uh, safely stop it and bring the uh, offenders to justice. Right, let's open the taps. The old Picasso has failed to stop for cops three times this week already. His MO is well known among interceptors. When it's failed to stop previously, they've gone off-road, which 
for us can be a bit of a problem. We're in the next five tonight, so we stand a better chance if we do get behind it. We may be able to stay with it off-road, but certainly some of the other vehicles on our uh, OS department won't keep with it um, in the field. But at this rate, off-road or on, there won't be a pursuit at all. Just hit that south yeah, no, uh, this way. Despite several units on the ground, the Picasso remains elusive. The first police car that sees it is going to be a pursuit. Yeah. But the issue is it's a massive area and it's literally yeah, it's it's pinging blue. about all over the it's shop, isn't it? Recently made full sergeant, Jim's trained in firearms, T-Pack and tasers. He has a no-nonsense approach to fighting crime. Attention. And sitting at a roundabout all night is not his idea of proactive police work. The point to point you just had is dropped out, because I've just heard Paul saying it's had the drop on us, we've got to the next roundabout and we can't see it anymore. After a couple of hours circling the area and no further sightings of the Picasso, the boys head back into the city. But while the cat's away... Is the last camera ping the one where we were sat earlier? They've picked this uh, Picasso up and a little failed to stop with it again. Uh, they've, just, they've just had a bit of a temporary loss with it, so just stand by. The suspect motor was spotted moments ago heading right for Jim and Lewis's location. Do you know roughly where they are, Jim? They've gone to Potter Street, that's the nick. The only question now is, do they feel lucky? What's that? What's that? It's going to be pretty quick. Fasten your seatbelts, folks. Jim's got a live one. Contact, contact, subject vehicle. We are strangely rare with vehicle. It's uh, now faded. Stop for us. Advanced driver, advanced car, T-pack chain. The Picasso's living up to its reputation already, hitting double the speed limit in a frantic bid to escape. Right, right. Spur present. And another right, right. Which is Edinburgh Road. It's now the small hours, and thankfully the roads are quiet. Pellet Street, between 6-0 and a 3-0. But because of previous form, Jim reckons he knows what's coming. He's going to go off-road in a minute. First, Lewis has to figure out the exit strategy. At the roundabout, not one, not one. Taking the second, the second. There's two men in the motor, and they're looking for a clean stretch of tarmac. He'll go for a down here, mate. He's quick. 14-year-old Picasso versus BMW X5. Place your bets. We are now 8-5 and a 6-0. Traffic is still very low. Vehicles are phone stop. A request is put in for stingers, and assistance can't come soon enough. Overtaking the vehicle on our wrong side of the road. We are 9-5 and a 6-0. It's not long before the runaway hits triple figures. Baby, he's flying. Being 100 now and a 6 0, great deal for a near side bend. Compared to Jim's X5, the Picasso is no masterpiece, and it's certainly not built for speed. Oh, he's going to lose it. Doing 7 0 and a 6 0. But the cocksure driver reckons he's got the upper hand. Well, he knows these roads. He's looking for an off. He's looking for an off road. He's now doing 111 miles an hour. Mate, we need some cars here for a tea pack. But the boys are on their own and suddenly find themselves in the firing line. What's that? Stop, 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 stop. Lewis has clocked some missiles being hurled in his direction. And now chucking stuff out the rear of the vehicle towards the police vehicle. But when Jim moves out of the way, the pesky Picasso spies his opportunity. Left, left, left on a dirt track. Within seconds, the Picasso disappears in a cloud of dust. I'm not clear where we are on a single track dirt lane. There's no, uh, no traffic, obviously. There's obviously no pedestrians. A request is made for the chopper, and dog handler Jen is also riding to the rescue. There's someone 
As the pursuit cuts deeper into no man's land, directing the troops is proving tricky. I think it's uh, say freeboard lane uh, where it's sat now, but it is a dog walking path. Even though Jim's going almost 60, the suspect's giving him the slip. Where is this going? We've lost sight of the uh, taillights now. Won't be surprised if their vehicle's in a pretty bad way. This is where it's going to uh, emerge. The old Picasso is a family MPV. It's not designed to handle these tracks or these speeds. What's this? It's a sight no interceptor ever wants to see. Vehicles crashed on a bridleway. We need the dog handler to us. In workshop, a runaway Citroen Picasso has finally met its match in Sergeant Jim Carrington. Left, left, left on a dirt track. But after leading Jim and Lewis on a reckless high-speed run up a bridle path, the outcome was all too predictable. Vehicles crashed on a bridleway. We need the dog handler to us. Nobody in the vehicle. They're out on foot. Both the driver and passenger of the car have vanished. What kind of condition they're in is unclear. NH, I want MPAS in a drone here, sharpish. Um, has airbags deployed on the vehicle? It's gone straight into a tree. Interceptor Rich Elliott has now arrived on the scene to help unearth the men. Stop. Stop still. Stop. But in situations like this, the cop they really need is police dog Quantum. Jen, we've had a little search on foot, just the immediate area, just to make sure we haven't got anyone injured. We won't go any further, we'll let the dog do its thing. Don't try and make my way to you now. Jen is still over 10 minutes away. Back in the woods, the mangled motor is giving cause for concern. There is an impact on the inside of the windscreen, passenger side where the front seat passengers went into the windscreen, but again, no blood or obvious major trauma within the vehicle. A sobering sight indeed. The back window's gone through. One of them was hanging out the back. And pass. Throwing stuff yes. at us. I'm glad we've got the vehicle. I'm hoping, obviously, there's no one injured. Um, Larry drivers, just that's, you know, shows the extent they're willing to go to to get away from us. So we're now in a situation where we don't know where they've gone. Well, it's a massive rural area. I've just looked on mapping. So it's about containing it, try and get Jen and Quants to us to track from it, go from there, get the drone up, get pass up, see if we can pick up a heat source. For now, they've got away. So at the minute, I'm a bit frustrated and a bit gutted because I'd like to get hold of them. There's someone else here who'd like to get hold of them too. Jen. Yeah? Police dog Quantum's finally on the scene. Pack it in. And he's itching to get tracking. Just watch yourself. Just watch it, because he's on it. Helicopter surveillance is also en route. You can pick up the dog handler. There's a couple of us behind him. Looks like he's nose down the tracking. So you can pick up the handler, please, and just work ahead. Good boy. Where'd they go? Quantum's clearly got a whiff of something. I was telling me they're here somewhere. But where are they? Please, to the dog, you show yourself now! He's not wanting to go any further than this. The eye in the sky is now directly overhead, scanning the area using thermal imaging. So, in past, can we assume you're picking up no resources, obviously, aside from the, the police source assets? Negative, uh, we're not picking anything up uh, before getting to that one. We'll see. I'm like 100% sure they've gone to that, that dry. Load of trees because it was dead animated around there to the point I thought they were hiding in there. I'm just gutted because we couldn't get to them quick enough, could we? After several hours combing the woods, the interceptors reluctantly decide to call off the search. My gut instinct is they're in here somewhere, but the helicopter's been over, not spotted them, so 
and we've done all we can. It's disappointing because we've been after this car for a few days now, so but they'll come again and we've got a car off them, haven't we? Yeah, Pursuit-wise, it's quick, isn't it? It always surprises me how much they get out of them cars. Um, but, and he did almost stack it a couple of times, but there's no members of the public about. We can manage the risk. The silver lining is to catch the thieves and they've slipped the net, but you never know. They still may come. Yeah, they are. Being a carp is a bit like being an Olympic athlete. Wrong spot, wrong spot. It requires stamina. Stay there now! He's got to be the taser! Stay where you are! Strength. It's on the floor now! And an insatiable desire to come out on top. Go to my colleague. Yeah, mate. Now detained in H. When you're coming up against young lads, tracksuits, trainers, and wear big thick boots, your body armour, and then your vest with your handcuffs, your baton, your taser, everything else. It's it's hard work, especially when, when it's warm out there. All this kit just weighs you down and restricts you, so the people we deal with have got a massive advantage over us when it's, you know, running away from us or, or trying to bike away from us, because we're, you know, we're having to run with twice as many things on us than they've got. Where's that, sorry, H? On a Monday, most of us are still blowing away the cobwebs from the weekend. Yeah, we're in an unmarked vehicle. Um, we're going to have a look. But interceptors are always on the ball. Lee and Dave's day has kicked off already. I only know that she's had four males run off from her. Uh, I don't know what they've done. Not had any more information, really. A few minutes ago, a local unit lit up a suspicious-looking motor nearby. The four lads inside got spooked, ditched the car and made a run for it. You got this on sat -navs. Yeah, I've got it, mate. I've got it. Over Trent Bridge. Lee and Dave are one of the several units en route. Hey, can we get an Oscar Delta uh, to the meadows, please? This uh, cop's still after these four. Behind the beard, baby-faced Lee's a man of many talents. Firearms, taser, stinger. If you need a bad guy taking down, Lee's your man. And they're going left on Bathley Street. He's also a highly effective human sat-nav. Left here, mate. They're saying about them going towards the tram track, so I don't know whether they just go towards the tram lines, mate. Let's see if we can see them coming out. Dave swings onto the tracks, but there's still no sign of the suspects or the ditched motor. Foxtrot 33, we're on the tram track side in case they come out. Meanwhile, a local unit has taken up position in the opposite corner of the estate. Bottom end towards the alleyway to get an officer down. The other cops have got a visual on the suspects. It runs to the Sundays on towards the Kremlin. It's the other side. Dave does as he's told and boots it. He's got to loop the estate to Sharpish. Uh, right here. One more turn should do the trick. And then it's follow it down and pick cans on the right. Lee and Dave haven't been given a description of all the lads involved. All they've got to go on is their copper's nose. Well, these two here. They don't look like they've been running, do they? They're not sure if it's the lads they're after, but then... Yeah, they are. Go, go, go. In situations like this, cops have to make a decision. Runners on. Runners on. Stop going down, you get teasing! The runners have split, so the boys take one each. The one, the other one's gone up there. They've gone back out, I'd see where... The lad Lee's after has got a head start and a fancy pair of trainers. Hey, no, let the dog off! Lee's got buckets of self-belief and a taser. Get on the floor! Get on the floor now! Get on the floor! Put your hands out! Robust tactics deliver instant results. Put your arm out! Put your arm out behind you! This young lad is going nowhere. It's one. One detained camo jacket. 
Don't know where the one's ran. But his mate appears to have slipped the net. Stand up for Jump me, up, nice and easy. One, two, three. <sighs> what we get? The one with the shorts and baseball cap, the navy jacket is the one he's outstanding. We've got the lad in the camo. While the lad's taken off to be searched, attention turns to the one that got away. It went up, um, you got just the, uh, and then they both got back, so I think one went the other way. Suddenly, cops are aware of a disturbance nearby. <laughs> Having barely caught his breath, Lee's off again. <laughs> he asked him. It seems there's been a bit of a pile-on. Put your hands on your back! They've caught the second runner, but it's taken five officers to keep him under control. Hey, have you got anything dangerous on you? Myself. Yourself? You ain't that bad, mate. <laughs> he clearly fancies himself as a bad boy, but the only thing dangerous about this lad is his sense of direction. He obviously don't know where they are because he's just been walking around, hasn't he? Yeah. He ran, then just walking around again. Yeah. With two in cuffs, a picture is beginning to emerge of what happened. I think a police car has seen a car doing a manoeuvre. Followed it. Uh, followed a little bit, and then the four guys have got out and just starburst from it. Even weighed down with 15 kilos of kit, Lee caught up with a lad less than half his age. That was good. 43. Still got it. But there's still a few unanswered questions. Right, should you find the car? They've got no drugs and no weapons. An H Fox Shot 33. So it's not entirely clear why the lads were so keen to get away. Could you just let us know where the vehicle in the meadows is parked? A look at the motor they apparently abandoned could shed some light. Where is it? It'll be that thing there. Is it that one? Sure. It must be. They found the car, and that's not all. Uh, Mum's uh, car. Lads uh, said he was driving it. So I think they're going to get de arrested anyway. He's going to get drug wiped. Right. It seems the cops have stumbled across suspect number three, the young driver. Honestly, God, honestly, you bloody... The car yes, belongs to his mum. Yes, you are. And That's although fine. Lee wants a word with him, he'll have to get in line. You think before you do something What do you mean? It turns out he's just 14 years old. Understandably, Mum's not too thrilled he took her motor for a spin. Honest to God, honestly, you bloody need to keep inside all the time, basically be locked in a cage. That's it. Simple as this. If you, you kill somebody in a car, you're not just getting a telling off. You're going to prison. You're going to prison. Just don't do it, mate. Think about what you want to do, yeah, and make your mum proud rather than upset, yeah? There's nothing quite like a few words of fatherly wisdom from an interceptor. The young chap won't be getting nicked, but fingers crossed he's learned his lesson. Like he's 14 years old, he's sat in the car with his mates, which mum was happy with, and then at some point he's decided to drive it. Um, and unlucky for him, at that moment in time, police cars pulled into the street, which is where this has all kind of started, where they've all run away. We've got tasers, we've got dogs if they're running away, we've got all that kind of stuff, you know. Notwithstanding the fact that you know they get taken to the floor and handcuffed, um, and they just don't think about that. They just think it's a it's a laugh. You know, they're just sat in the car with the mates, probably been goaded a little bit, and then uh, next thing it's rolling off the drive, and we're going for a little jaunt round round the close. The lads' two mates were de-arrested, and no charges were brought. The young driver later returned a negative drug wipe. However, he was still issued six penalty points and fined £92 for driving without insurance or a full licence. But the harshest punishment of all will surely come from Mum. His mum, she's got three or four police cars outside her house and all the neighbours can see that, So, and, and I'm sure that's not what she wanted. Bit of a stupid decision, really, for a 50-yard joyride. Still to come. Okay, oh, okay, so now's the uncomfortable bit. Just pull your boxes down for me. An intimate search reveals all. You've got something on your bum, mate. Stop resisting. Stop. You'll get tased in. Stop resisting. And... Got laceration to the throat, arterial bleed. A shocker for the knife crime team. I killed me, George, over the football.
Since forming in 2016, the Knox Knife Crime team have taken more than 450 deadly weapons off the streets. Very dangerous weapon. It's used for nothing else other than violence and uh, causing injury to people. And these elite cops know the quickest way of finding a knife carrier. Oh, here we go. Class A and B. Is to follow the drugs. It's concealed, mate. An ounce of crack cocaine and also about an ounce of heroin. It's a really good result. Intelligence for, for knives and people carrying knives is quite rare. It's something people don't see realistically when somebody's carrying a knife but the intelligence comes through about the drugs because the dealing on the streets is open for people to see. The people we're targeting are mainly um, organised crime groups or urban street gangs, and the knives and the weapons come hand in hand with that. They make their money through selling drugs and they have to protect that. So taking the drugs off them, off the streets, is definitely a win for us. On a damp Thursday evening, knife crime team stalwart Ken and Joe are cruising the inner city suburbs. Yeah. yeah. Someone has caught their eye. Hello. We've got that lad. He's just walking towards the state. I can't get those to the We've spotted a young lad walking down one of the side streets in this housing estate in, uh, in Radford. We had an encounter with him probably about a week ago. In close proximity to class A drug users and uh, hopefully we can catch him red-handed mid-deal with some drugs on him. Ken's a man of simple pleasures. A night in with a pizza and an action movie is number two on his list of all-time favourite hobbies. Number one on that list is catching drug dealers red-handed. I think he might have took the footpath because I can't see him anywhere around here. To help catch his man, Ken's leaving nothing to chance. And today, he's got eyes all over the estate. What are we thinking? We think he'd just jump on him or hop him for a bit first. Interceptors Dan and Mark are circling the same area. We're just coming over to you. Eyes right, chaps. These two. They clocked two suspected users lurking in an alleyway. They look like kids. Also circling the area is an unmarked surveillance unit that's feeding intel to Ken and Joe. He's dealt to him. Yeah, he's dealt to him then, hasn't he? And there's two more waiting. With suspected users loitering all over the estate, Ken reckons it's only a matter of time before he gets his man. At the minute, um, plane officer's just got a view of him in some alleyways uh, where we are at the minute and we know there's some more users waiting nearby, so I'm, I'm hopeful that if we just take a time, we can, we can catch this lad. After a couple of minutes, Joe spots something. Uh, there's a young lad just come out, all in white, with a black coat on. It's a second suspect, and he's heading straight into the path of the undercover unit. Can you see behind us if he comes out further up? The team reckon they've just seen the man hop into a motor with suspect number one. That car's parked up. That lad just passed under that vehicle. It's the queue they've been waiting for, so Ken rolls out. Just on the right turn. Dan and Mark are closing in too. Coming round on the street. The two suspects are sitting in a parked-up Ford. They're in a cul-de-sac, but there's a maze of footpaths and alleyways they could disappear into. If you come up with let's strike this together so we can get both contained. Plan A is to launch both cop cars into the street to box in the Ford. But the boys need a plan B in case the lads do a runner. Don't let me out and I'll go down there. Yeah. Just jog round. While Joe heads off on foot, Dan and Mark get ready to lead the strike. Say when, Joe. Now. It's showtime. 
Where is it? Let's see it. This one. This one here, yeah. He's gonna move. The lads in the Ford never even saw it coming. Get your hands up, mate. Mate, on, man. keep your hands where I can see him. Yeah, yeah, you can't get out, mate, because I've got the car. He'll have it in his pants. You're obviously a bit nervous. What's going on, mate? You got any drugs in the car on you? No. Right, stinks of cannabis, and obviously we've had some information that you're dealing drugs, all right? We're dealing drugs? Yeah. I've only got tobacco on the drugs. Right, OK, well, there we are then, mate, all right? The passenger remains trapped in the motor. Keep your hands where I can see him. Hands, hands yeah, I want, you, I want to see your hands, mate. And Ken reckons he's up to no good. Taking the piss, man. We believe he's just been involved in drug dealing, mate. OK, just step out for us. The boys are convinced he's just stashed something. You got anything on you I should know no, about? I don't. Anything that's going to hurt me or you? No, I don't. OK. I'm just going to lift your arms up so my colleague can have a look around your waistband, mate. The men's pockets are clean, but Ken and the boys are determined to see this one through. Realistically, you're going to be detained for a strip search, all right? We'll speak... Whatever, to, yeah, we'll get an authority from a, an inspector, explain the circumstances, whatever. and uh, we'll go from there, buddy, OK? Whatever, bro. Well, I'm not going to have no any way for this. You get me? Yeah, obviously, we have reason to think you might. That's the whole point of why we're doing what we're doing, buddy, all right? The sweep of the motor turns up a suspected burner phone and a small amount of cannabis. Both men are off to the nick. Have you got anything you shouldn't have? After being booked in, their handcuffs are removed before the intimate search begins. Okay, okay. So now, just so they can come to a bit, just pull your boxes down for me. Sounds like Ken has drawn the short straw. You've got something up your bum, mate. Stop Please resisting. Go. You'll get tasered. Stop resisting. Get some assistance in here. Come in, sir. It's out. It's out. It's out. It's out. Stop resisting. <laughs> With the help of interceptor Dan Mottishaw, the man is back in cuffs. Stay still. Got him. Yeah, suspicion of possession with intent to supply a controlled drug. And under arrest. Three five Pewits. For now, the drama's over. The lad in the white trousers is fighting in there. Um, and basically a, a small bundle of what we need to be class A wraps is uh, come from him. He's tried to conceal it, and by doing that, he's trying to fight and kick at cops. So he's been 3-5 uh, at the moment, arrested for uh, possession of intense fire class A. While the man's carted off, Joe's taking a look at his stash, which thankfully has now been sealed in an evidence bag. This has come out of his pants. Inside, we've got quite a large wrap of brown powder, which we think is going to be heroin. And also in there is a few loose lumps of uh, white rock, which we believe is going to be crack cocaine. The wraps of white powder, there's a, there's a few in there, so they're £10 each, but it all need weighing and seeing how much it is. The wraps will be sent off to the lab for analysis. Whatever the powders are, the man has claimed they're for his personal use only. But the night isn't over yet. Do you want me to get some trousers for him? Yes. As all cops know, drugs and weapons are a regular double act on the street, albeit a deeply unpleasant one. Following further investigations, Ken wants another chat with a man in the white trousers. There's been a report of uh, a fight or an altercation between two lads involving weapons. Officers have conducted some CCTV inquiries and you've been identified from it wearing white trousers, which is why I want your trousers. And, as such, I'm arresting you on suspicion of a fray. Right. The man's white trousers have landed him in double trouble. A regrettable fashion choice in more ways than one. The CCTV footage of the man in the white trousers proved inconclusive and no charges were brought in relation to the alleged affray. Both men have been released under investigation for possession with intent to supply Class A substances. As part of the investigation, no charges were brought for the suspected cannabis. Cops on the knife crime team targeting drug hotspots is only part of the equation. They're trained to respond swiftly and robustly to any weapons-related incidents especially if it means they get a blade off the street. 
Paul Kingston and Chantelle McDowell are just getting wind of something serious. The victim is that possibly have their throat cut. Please. We'll have to do it. Yeah, we'll The incident has occurred at a property five miles south of Mansfield. Are you happy for us to go towards the offender's address? A woman has reportedly been attacked with a Stanley knife. On jobs like this, every second counts. Next right. Another unit is already on the scene. Yeah, got him. We're within about 30 seconds, Mark. The suspect has been apprehended. But he's not exactly coming quietly. Can you wait? Get in, get in. Get in, get in. Here. While Kingo introduces him to the van, listen. Chantel's priorities lie with the victim. Whereabouts is the wound? Is it on the right hand side? Or? Right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep breathing for the me. The are far away. All right. Paramedics are on the way. They're not. No. While they tend to the gash on her neck, it's down here. Kingo reckons he's found the blade that did it. There's a Stanley knife on the floor. Sorry. Come on. Knife's here, mate. Proud local lad Kingo became a cop to help protect his community, and he's picked up two chief constable commendations for his efforts. You put on the log that the uh, weapon used. Right. It's just outside the um, rear door to the property at the side of some bins. We've got it on body one. Within minutes, paramedics arrived to assume control. 8339, got laceration to the throat, arterial bleed. But it's clear the situation remains critical. Oh, it's going to hurt, sweetheart. You've just got to stay with us. All right. I'm so right. sorry, sweetheart. You can see all over the sofa and all over her clothes how much it's spurted out. So all you can do is put pressure on her wound on her neck to stop her bleeding or prevent her bleeding as much as we could. Uh, but paramedics are really quick on the scene, so they've taken over. Back on the street, cops are trying to get to the bottom of what went down. Just, right. just chill. You ain't just chill. I was just trying to I murder was... my daughter. She's my football up. Yeah. She kicked my jelly and shot me watching football. I got not stand that, so I killed her. Yeah. Yeah. The bearded man claims to be the victim's father, and while the incident is about as serious as it gets, the alleged motive is even more shocking. It was a row over football. Right. I killed my daughter over football. The suspect has said that he's killed his daughter because she wouldn't let him watch the football. That's what apparently this is over. In the UK, 92% of violent attacks against women are committed by someone they know. Thankfully, this victim's critical condition has now been stabilised by two teams of paramedics. The um, knife has caught two of her arches. But it seems to have got it in control, really. The woman is heading straight to hospital, leaving behind her home, which is now a crime scene. Luckily, the victim's still obviously alive, but it is life-threatening. So we've put a scene on at the address. Um, so obviously CSI can come out, do their thing, uh, recover the alleged weapon used in it and take any evidence from inside the address. Yeah, I've dealt with this chap quite a few times. He's very drunk and obviously something quite horrific has gone off in that address. Um, lady's got life-threatening injuries, uh, but luckily paramedics were here quite quick, giving advanced medical care, so fingers crossed she'll make it. Distressing as it may seem, Today's incident is an all too familiar sight for the cops, especially a seasoned interceptor like Kingo. I've been in the police 14 years. Um, to be honest, nothing surprises me anymore. I think after a few years' service, you just get a bit, a bit used to seeing the worst in people and what they can do when they've either had a beer or when they're angry and upset. Someone gets upset over something quite trivial, things are said. And, um, Sometimes people choose to do silly things. Fortunately, the female victim survived the attack. The man was charged with attempted murder. At his trial, he was found guilty 
and got 22 years behind bars. Still to come. Yeah, go on. Head on, head on, head on. A tidy tea pack scores a perfect 10. No contact. Tight. It's late on a Wednesday. Spencer Pugh and Ian Coleman are out in the X5 when they get word of a suspicious vehicle across town. That's a black Volvo C30, which is insured in Somerset. It's on with the twos and off to the rescue. So we're just um, heading to go and support one of our uh, road crime colleagues who's behind uh, a car which we believe is going to be a clone. The registration comes back to uh, a Somerset address, um, so obviously it's peculiar that it's going to be up here in the Nottingham area. It's entirely possible the Volvo's driven 200 miles up from Somerset for a short midweek break. Possible, but unlikely. So we're looking for a black Volvo C30. Cloning number plates is one of the fastest growing car crimes in the UK, having risen by 400% in the past six years. Sometimes it can be a cover for uh, criminality, drug dealing, burglaries, vehicle thefts. Quite often, uh, it's simply uh, somebody doesn't want to pay for insurance and so they'll just clone the vehicle uh, to, to hide that fact and try and um, make use of somebody else's insurance payments. But this one's come up as quite suspicious because it's come from completely the other end of the country. He may not be in the hot seat tonight, but Ian's no slouch behind the wheel himself. A top tactical driver, he thrives on teamwork. Little surprise then that he's also a sucker for a nice, tidy tea pack. We've got a car behind it at the moment, so we're just going to go and give them some options for a, uh, a preemptive boxing. There are now four unmarked cop cars tailing the Volvo. Are we on it? Yeah. Spence and Ian are bringing up the rear. <laughs> Ahead of them is dog handler Coops. Approaching the roundabout, at the roundabout, on the roundabout. Suddenly, the Volvo attempts to double back. Yeah, go on. Head on, head on, head on. You turn if you want to. Coops is having none of it. The suspect's been boxed in on all sides. Get out the car! Get out the car now! It seems the three chaps inside need a bit of gentle persuasion. See about off. See about off. Oh, out the car. Get out the car. Key hands where I can see him. Come to me. Turn around. Hands behind your back. Whose car is it? Uh -huh. I don't know. The lad appears a little confused. Perhaps he's tired after the long drive up from Somerset. Just go and take a seat at the back of our car over here. With the driver and both passengers being questioned, Spence takes a moment to appreciate a fellow interceptor's handiwork. Was this you, Coops? Yeah. Good work, mate. Yeah. Good work. Uh, there's no contact there, is there? No. Get a bit of paper through there. To be fair, Ian said to me, go for it, and then you did it. So it's a, it could have well, been... Yeah. <laughs> it's clocked that it's been followed by a number of unmarked police vehicles, and then it's had an opportunity to do, like, a, a reciprocal on the roundabout. Fortunately, one of our dog handlers uh, was uh, on point there and has, has nosed it off. It's been blocked in from behind. It's gave it nowhere to go, and absolutely it would have failed to stop, I think, if, uh, if it had had the chance. It turns out the motor is linked to drug dealing and a different set of plates in the boot fuels suspicions that it's a clone. We'll do some further inquiries, but at the moment we're working on the assumption it's a stolen vehicle. Meanwhile, cops continue their search. Lots of intel for drugs, but the car's clean. No drugs are found in the car or on the lads who were in it. All right, then. All the best. Cheers, mate. Cheers. The passengers are free to go, and now Ian's got some results on the Volvo's ID. We've checked out the plates. Uh, it's not a stolen car, uh, but the driver's obviously driving without insurance, and there's going to be some document offences that they're going to deal with. Uh, there's no drugs in the car, there's no stolen property. 
Uh, not found anything on them, so it's just going to be driving offences uh, and the uh, and the false plates. Midweek night shifts. We want something to happen, no doubt at all. That was going to fail to stop. So, yeah, your heart gets pumping for a little bit. Um, but um, to a safe conclusion, no damage, no injuries. Everybody accounted for. It's all good. No action was taken against either of the passengers. However, the chap behind the wheel was charged with driving without front or rear registration plates, driving without a full licence and driving without valid insurance. Eight points and a £660 fine is not what he bargained for from this staycation. What's more, no cop cars were injured during the execution of the T-Pack. There's an inch there. Look at that. Perfect. No contact, tight. I like it. No paperwork. Yes. And the police interceptors are back next Wednesday at 8. Famed for its distinct flame grilled taste, we're off to Burger King to ask how do they really do it? Brand new Friday at 7. It's a battle to bring a toxic blaze under control next as the Chernobyl disaster. Our brand new documentary continues with Firestorm.